Good evening, folks. Collective Minds episode 21. Today we have a special guest and a special episode. Uh, we're going to focus tonight on talk about tax code changes and implications to our buying and selling of collectibles. And so join me in welcoming Megan from True Accounting. She's going to be our tax expert tonight and fill us in. And um, oops, sorry, I just... I always, I always kick, do that. I have my, all off. <laughs> I had, no, I had my YouTube open and I start hearing myself talking in the, uh, with the, with the delay. Um, okay. So as you all have probably, as you all probably know that the tax code changed, um, PayPal has made some announcements about, uh, the old trigger for 1099s was $20,000 in uh, transactions per year plus 200 uh, transactions before you would get a tax document from PayPal um, or whatever service you're using for, for electronic tr funds transfers. Um, but now the, the code has changed and it's uh, $600 total per year. So there's a whole lot of anxiety. Um, I pretty much have stopped selling as of January 1st. Uh, because I don't know really what I'm doing, and uh, let's let's uh, jump into this and and see if we can dispel some of the rumors and and figure out what we actually need to be doing when we're when we're buying and selling. So, Bacon, did I get it right about um, the numbers and the cutoffs with respect to the 1099 form that we will be receiving? Yes, as a as it shows today. Who knows what Congress will do tomorrow? <laughs> right. Okay. Especially right. with it being a holiday, that's when they kind of work in the shadows <laughs> and change things. <laughs> you think so? That they're it, off. So it, it's possible that um, we might see the tax code change even within within this calendar year, and for twenty twenty two, be reporting something different. Do you think Congress can always do whatever they want? So. Yeah, and they can make it retroactive, and it just really depends on whatever the issues at the moment are. I really think that the reason why they did this is to bring it more in line with the contractors. Those have been $600 for a while now, and they're seeing the massive amounts of transactions and dollar amounts that entities like eBay and Etsy and PayPal are reporting, and they're not seeing any correlation to people's tax returns. So they're looking at, um, it's low hanging fruit for the IRS to try to bring in some more revenue or Congress to bring in more revenue. This is simply going to be uh, where the IRS matches up what's reported by these entities uh, with your tax return. And if they're not seeing a correlation between it, if it's not looking nice and pretty, then it, the computer's gonna send you a letter and say, prove to us that this was an income. But yes, the, uh, the Congress can do what they want when they want. And do you, do you think it will, it will extend to all platforms, Cash App, Venmo, uh, possibly even things like, um, uh, what the heck's the name of it, Western Union? Some of those already have their own requirements um, that they have to that they would have to not necessarily report to you, but report to the IRS, just like banks. Western Union would be under those rules. It could. Uh, right now, I'm not seeing those trans um, those translations or or those uh, insights into it. Uh, there are rules, but we're kind of waiting to see who exactly has to, who qualifies as a third party party service organization. I actually have kind of a related question to that. So me and my wife have been married for a while now, and but we still have separate banks and bank accounts. And literally at the end of the month, she tells me like, hey, your bills are this. And I literally just sell her the money, but it exceeds $600 every time. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, how will that work? Do you, any idea on that? I don't know specifically with Zelle, and that sounds like it's going to be the personal transactions that, according to the definitions, do not qualify for the 1099K. 
Uh, right now, it's supposed to apply to services and goods and not, you know, friends and family. However, who's telling the truth on whether it's friends and family? I don't know at this point. Right now, it should be the uh, services and goods. Uh, I'm not quite sure that I would call giving your wife money for services. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Man, especially if you know Jay. <laughs> wow, that got dark real quick. Yeah. <laughs> so, we will, uh... it, it would seem that then people will be just like, oh, well, I sold my statue to my wife that lives two states away. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> my, my fifth wife, uh, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so that, well, that uh, kind of leads into that kind of leads into an interesting uh, question. Um, you know, people can do all kinds of mental gymnastics to placate themselves. Say, okay, I'm not cheating because I know this. But if the IRS comes knocking, um, they're not going to say <laughs> they're not going to accept. Yeah, well, that was a transaction that that was something to my wife or y you have to have better documentation. Is that is that a fair statement? Fair. Um, I am an enrolled agent, so I do prepare tax returns. I do individual and corporate and I also represent before the IRS. So I've done a number of audits on this things that they would want. Now, in the case of giving your wife money, sounds like that happens on a monthly basis. That to me doesn't sound like a, uh, a business. You know, you can prove you would have receipts, you would have transactions showing that it's gone from you to her. It, you'd have a, a statement showing your bank account and then her bank account. That would be a really easy one to prove uh, on that. So, um, okay. Thank you. I'd also say, Joe, it sounds like you've got a roommate instead of a marriage. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's time to join all those accounts. <laughs> hey, no. hey, easy now, Art. I'm 29 I, years, I my wife and that. I had our money separate. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I'm with Joe on that. My husband and I have the same thing. He knows how much he has to give me every month. I take care of the yep. bills, and it's so much easier. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I need to change my ways. <laughs> I'm texting my wife right now. <laughs> Time to separate the finances. Yeah, get out of my account. <laughs> it's just easier. Then you know how much is in your account. You're good yep. and everything's taken care of. Yep. Yeah, well, my wife doesn't know how to check an account, so it's just a swipe of the card. <laughs> but that's a little bit different. That's, that's a different... Uh, Different specialists coming in next week for those kind of conversations that I'm going to be doing. Yeah, stand by for a marriage counselor next week. Yeah. Uh, so, if 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 we're going to continue to do buying and selling mm -hmm. um, uh, on on eBay, on Etsy, and or, or using PayPal uh, goods and services. Um, what level of documentation of money in, money out should we should we be should we really be compiling all of our receipts for what we paid for something and what we then turned around and sold it for? Um, is is that something we really need? Because I think a lot of us have not kept good track of that in the past. Um, the easy answer is to say keep everything better to have too much than not enough um but the receipts would be good if you you're going to need to at least know what you bought it for and what you sold it for that that's going to help you first now if you're paying shipping now as we we're talking earlier there's a difference some of you might be doing this as a hobby some of you might be doing this as a business and there are different rules for that if it's a hobby, one, you can't take losses as the rules stand now. They changed those in 2018. And it's right now those are set to expire in 2015, but we don't know what's going to happen. If it's a hobby, there's a lot of expenses you can't take. 
but you can take how much you bought it for and things that go with your cost of goods sold. Those would be items such as your shipping, if you sold it to somebody uh, and had to ship it. Now, as a business, there's a whole other category you could take. You could take um, any conference dues. You could take, if you have a collector's association that you belong to, you could take those expenses against your income. You There's a whole... There's a ton of things you can take. Downside on that is you could pay self-employment taxes and there are other downsides on both. It really depends what you're going for and what your business is. The IRS wants to know, is there a profit motive? If there's a profit motive, they will probably classify you as a business and you'll have to do the appropriate forms. Most people, want to be a business because they want to take more deductions than there are than they can and they can also take some losses depending on other things on their tax return so the irs more uh, um is more likely to look at a schedule c a, a business uh that's been losing money consistently and try to say are they really a business but i guess what i'm trying to say is there's different rules but keeping receipts is good um uh, how how detailed you get uh, goes to how deep how painful do you want tax time to be how painful would you want any questions to be and how nitpicky uh your tax preparer is does printing out like your i guess if i purchase a statue on ebay does printing that out just like the ebay page constitute a receipt or do yeah. i need like the paypal transaction to constitute the receipt no, a, a, um, an eBay uh, transaction would be good. Um, printing it, great. Uh, you, it'd be good if you can identify exactly which item it goes to. And actually, since most eBay transactions are going to show exactly what you bought, that's better than a PayPal transaction showing $20. Uh, that's the digital equivalent of you went to Walmart. Um, okay. No way to really know how much you, you did there. Uh, printing is great. Um, I would have a backup uh, digitally. Okay. So. I have a question See, about prior because I guess eBay only holds up to like, I think less than a year of your past previous. Oh. Yeah, I think because I tried mm -hmm. searching my past and my past purchases and it only goes to a certain amount, like a certain date. Yeah, it used to, to show everything. Yeah, dude. but I think since but they dude. made the changes, I, I want to say it gives you at least a year and a six half. Six months at least, like six months to pa a year, I think. PayPal holds many several years because I've gone back and looked. Yeah, at it. but PayPal sometimes for eBay accounts or eBay purchases. Yeah, they don't. They don't say specific what it is. It's just the yeah. it went to this eBay and then it'll give you like a bunch of random numbers and code or whatever. Uh, or I would imagine also you bought blah 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 statue. For the people that are wanting to say, oh, I'm a, a statue business now because I'm, I'm selling so much and I've got a YouTube page. So that means I'm a business. I, I would assume you have to have a little bit more than that to claim that you're a business as you're selling your stuff, like a business license and all that, um, rather than just doing a check when you file your, your taxes. Not necessarily. I mean, ideally, you would have registered with the state uh, businesses. Businesses can go either with what's called an employer identification number that they get from the IRS, but a lot of small businesses use their social security number. It's still reportable as, an in, as a business. It is still done on a business form. Um, the IRS wants to see a profit motive. Like I said, they want to see, are you uh, operating in a business like fashion? They want to know about how many hours you're spending on this. Do you have other sources of income? Uh, they, they have a whole list of questions that boil down to, are you trying to make a profit? The, um, the caveat about not being able to write off losses from a hobby confused me when I first read that. And of course, I, I panicked and, and thought that meant that if I bought a statue, for example, for $1,000 and I sold it for $800, that... I would have to report income of eight hundred dollars 
and the thousand dollar cost of the statue, I, I, I'm just kind of SOL on. That's that's a misinterpretation, uh, correct? Yes. If you bought it for a thousand and you sold it for eight hundred, you lost two hundred dollars on the transaction. Okay. Okay. Now, when we were talking about losses, another thing to think about is, especially for the things you do with selling several items and some you're going to have an uh, income on and some you might have a loss on, you can't net that out. Oh. If you had a loss of $200 on item A, that's gone. If you had a gain of $200 on I item B, you still have that gain of $200. It's not you know, oh. I had a oh. negative 200 and I had a positive 200. So it's a zero. Well, that's thanks. That's, <laughs> that's, um, that's with respect to it being a hobby, but not with, if with were, a hobby. If it, if it now, were a business, then you can sum up, you can sum up and balance that. Yeah. And I will say that that's my interpretation of the law from my research. Uh, there may be some preparers out there that are more liberal in their interpretation. <laughs> uh. Yeah, well, Jerry, you got nothing to worry about. Everything you sell is for a loss. So, <laughs> al al almost, almost everything. It looks like some things might not be going up for sale if that. Um, if the, if I can't take all the other losses and throw it into the you know few times that I actually make some money, that might rethink what I what I actually put up for sale and what I don't uh, put up for sale. Uh, that's 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 interesting. We got a good question in the chat. Um, what about adding in shipping costs and expenses? Do they subtract from the profit? Shipping, yes. Uh, shipping would be a cost of goods sold. Other items um, that would I would count for the cost of goods sold. Let's now it doesn't really apply to you all because you're buying things that are already made. But if you were buying parts and putting them together, the uh, those separate parts would be it. Um, any shipping that was associated with that, anything that is involved in the actual making of the product and the getting it to its uh, end user and client. And um, I'm going to have purchase. I'm going to have to find some five hundred dollar rolls of tape. I think. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> I, I think that's what some people are asking is if they have to go buy boxes and bubble wrap and tape and things of that nature. Do those, mm -hmm. can you also deduct those off the profit aspect? Yes. Well, I'm curious, like you were saying, as far as stuff we'd have to do. So if you sent just in our hobby, you know, you got a piece in, then you sent it to get repainted. Um, that's going towards the unit itself. Could you deduct that then? Cause it's, you're, you're having to pay an outsider to, to paint it up. Or does that have nothing to do with what you would, you know, post as far as your law saying, if I bought a thousand dollar statue and then it cost me another five to a thousand dollars to have it painted and then I sold it, you know, how would you, I guess, mark that up or, or anything, or maybe it has nothing to do with it. And I'm just rambling on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would include that in your cost of goods school. It's going into part of the end product. It's going into the piece that is being sent. Uh, things I wouldn't take is a, is a hobby is your internet connection oh, or, right. oh. you know, food. Now, all right, internet connection I w is a bad example. I wouldn't take it to begin with, but if you had a website that was just kind of a hobby website, uh, I wouldn't take the domain hosting for that because it doesn't go into the finished product. Uh, but if you, if you, form a business then then you could potentially write off that that yes okay mm -hmm. right. wow jerry you starting up a business i'm thinking <laughs> about it um so i imagine we'll we'll get so if we go in, if we get back to buying and selling and um and i'll get one ten ninety nine from paypal from all the transactions i do in a year I guess I better keep some pretty detailed records uh, because if, you know, if I sell $5,000 worth of statues, $10,000 worth of statues, for example, it's just going to say, it's not going to have an itemized list of the, I wouldn't imagine. It's just going to be like any other 1099 I get with just a number on it. Right. Uh, box it, one, $10,000. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it does break it out by month, the 299K. So it will show how many transactions you had in January versus February. Um, and that's, I, I can say what the form is now. I don't know how that will change uh, this next year. Then there's a lot of form changes. We still have forms uh, for the 2021 tax returns that are in draft version uh, with the IRS right now. So when, does that all, when does that all get resolved? When they <laughs> get around to it? Uh, <laughs> because imagine there's some people that have like, you know, really simplistic taxes. They're just, they just get their, uh, their um, W-2 and uh, are they not able to file right now? Right now, no. I believe I don't have the date on me. It's either the 24th or the 27th of January that people can start electronically filing. Mm. So that's when you can actually start. The, the forms that are in draft version are a little more obscure than the typical person would use. So those tend to be the ones that get uh, done later. Um, I would and encourage people what, to hold off on high, uh, filing right now. Uh, you got those nice, pretty uh, advanced child tax credit payments last year or the stimulus payments. They are going to be sending you a form so that you can report the accurate number that you have. And I would wait for those. Hmm. That's good information. I'm sitting here thinking, how soon? As soon as my wife gets the last form, we're, we're filing. But uh, I didn't even think about uh, getting another form for all that. You take your time and get it right the first time. If it doesn't match up the IRS's records, it's going to go into limbo for forever for somebody to personally look at it. Uh, we, we're still waiting on people to get their refunds from last year because they might have had those numbers wrong. Oh, wow. So um, what does it what does the form where does the 1099s go right now? Uh, that does, do you have to do you have a separate form that gets filed? Uh, for a number of 1099Ks that you receive? The 1099Ks typically flow uh, to different um, business entities. They haven't flown, gone to hobbies before. Oh. So, so right now there's, on last year's tax return, I would not have had a way to put the 1099K to a hobby. The hobby income goes directly onto a line on the 1040 and that's where you know we just put the income that was gained from those hobby activities. I'm expecting this year that they will have a way for that to go to a separate hobby income form, maybe. Um, we don't know. I could put those to a Schedule C of business income and mark a box that says this is not uh, related to self-employment and put the appropriate expenses in there. but. We don't know right now what they're going to advise us to do. Uh, luckily, we have a whole year to figure it out. But <laughs> we just we just don't know. There there isn't right now a correct way to do it. it there's better ways, uh, but the 1099k it'll go somewhere on your return. We we're going to have to have to, some way to say here's the income, here's the the subtraction for your expenses. And for those thinking that they're going to go, oh, well, we're just going to be a business. If there's still income on that business, um, when you have a W-2 employer, you know that you have the W-2 that shows your income, how much taxes they took out, and your Social Security and your Medicare. Uh, those are The Social Security and Medicare are your employment taxes. What they take out of your paycheck is only half of what's owed on your income. Your employer pays the other half. If you are a business and you have income, you get the privilege of paying both of those halves, which means on top of any income taxes that you owe on your income, you're going to pay 15.3% in employment taxes as well. Ooh. So that's something you don't see when you're an employee because it's taken out in those little bits and you just don't think about it. Wow. So in the past, I'm sure there's nobody in the chat or on the panel that has ever done this before, but in the past, <laughs> um, were we wrong for buying a statue for a thousand dollars, selling it for a thousand dollars and not telling anybody the wiser about anything, not putting it on a, on a tax form? 
Not really. Uh, um, if there was a loss, no, you you wouldn't have reported it. I don't put zeros on every single line. Okay. If you don't have a business, it's an automatic zero on there. Okay. In the hobby, if there was no hobby income to report, there isn't a line to say, yeah, I had a hobby, but there was no income on it. Do you ever think the IRS, and, and this is, you know, just for your own speculation, certainly, we, you know, whatever you think, but <laughs> do you ever think they'll get to the point where they're looking at in and out flows of in and out in um, personal bank accounts? Because I don't think they look at that right now unless there's an issue, but... Um, you know, if you have two hundred thousand dollars come in and um, and a hundred thousand dollars go out, uh, and you're and you work for a job that you get paid a hundred thousand dollars a year on, where that other hundred k come from? Um, uh, um, you know, will they get will they get so detailed where they're having the banks report transactions per year? Good lord, I hope they have better things to do. <laughs> But uh, in ways they do, there are reporting requirements. If if you do a transaction over a certain dollar amount, the banks are required to uh, report it, not to the IRS, but I would, I'm not sure I want to say the SEC, but if, whatever entity that they have to report those to. Um, who knows with computers? Um, we're all going to be doing gold bars or something. Um, and before you <laughs> all start saying crypto, uh, th that is not <laughs> that is not the answer. Uh, right. They are looking at crypto right now, and just to throw this out there, um, it's not whether you make money on crypto. You should be being asked the question saying, "Did you buy, sell, receive, or use crypto this year?" Let's say I had ten thousand dollars sitting in crypto. And I used five dollars to uh, get a, uh, a a coffee, even though that's really cheap coffee. Um, you had to sell some of that crypto to buy that coffee. You've got a, a, a reportable sale in there. And that goes on an that goes on a uh, tax form. Yeah, um, depends what what uh, platform you use. There are some platforms that are giving you nice statements at the end of the years. Yeah. There are those that aren't. Uh, just realize that this is a foreign currency and it is reportable. Oh. So yeah, they've gotten rid of the, uh, and there are requirements now for the different exchanges to um, to report this. The IRS has been serving John Doe summonses, which means we're not going after a specific person. We want to know, we want the whole, um, the whole file on everybody. So, wow. so yeah, so you do need to keep, um, <laughs> um to keep records on that so if you're not tracking your crypto do you know all the <laughs> all the forks all the splits all the find something because it, even if you uh, move from one exchange to another if you went from bitcoin to ethereum that's a trade that's a sale two questions um that i think <laughs> would would ha help the chat that i think we talked about pre pre-show but i haven't done it live yet um, so for the people that are watching eBay and PayPal, we'll be sending separate 10, whatever number it is, 10 separate 1099. Uh, the way um, that it is set up is there should only be, each transaction should only be reported once, whether eBay or PayPal does that. It's going to depend. There's, there's going to be a hierarchy of whose responsibility is. So in a perfect world, they would be done once. Cannot guarantee that there will not be uh, mistakes, which is yet another reason why to keep your own records. Because since eBay has split from PayPal, like the, when I sell something on eBay, it doesn't even go to PayPal anymore. It goes straight to my bank account. Right. You'll get, I'm sure eBay will probably be, uh, managing because eBay's payouts uh, now go to the seller that on eBay, but the buyers can still pay with PayPal um, into eBay. But eBay decoupled their 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 payouts from it doesn't go into your PayPal account anymore. It goes right to whatever bank account you you have. You have Correct. Yeah. And then the second question, which I don't know if you can answer, is 
like the cutoff day. So I sold stuff on December 31st, but didn't get my payout till after the first. Any speculation on how that'll settle out for the people watching? I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm not sure which date they will pick. Um, in business transactions, I do usually see um, a date being picked, either the settlement date or the transaction date. But which one they will pick, um, I, I don't know. Uh, they should tell you in a statement. I would keep your end of the year and beginning of the year statements. And when you get that 1099K, verify which which transactions were there or not. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily wrong, uh, but it's good information to have going forward to know which date they pick. Just like your credit card statement, it doesn't uh, necessarily end on the 31st of the month. There's a different drop dead dates on it. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm looking at the chat and, um, and Edward said that uh, Megan mentioned crypto and, and Ark turned off his camera. I don't think <laughs> I don't think that was that's correlation, but not causation there. I don't think, uh, <laughs> I don't think that was intentional. Um, nope, here he is. He's back now. <laughs> Uh, was I getting no, made fun of just then? Yeah, you were, we were busting on you. So Edwin <laughs> said that uh, you heard crypto and turned in and you ran. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh -huh. And then uh, and then Greg Folks also said uh, this topic's hurt Narc said. My uh, my children were were having to come apart. <laughs> Sometimes so you got to deal with them. So, so we kind of I mean I think we're just just um, pretty much in, in limbo as far as worrying too much about this and what the, and how complicated the filing's going to be um, for 22. Uh, right. There's, there's no, we, we really have no idea what this form is going to end up looking like. No. Uh, um, and, and we can speculate all we want about what we think they're going to want us to do. The bottom line is IRS wants you to report all income. Um, that's always been the case and whether, you know, whatever form that takes, they want to know what income you have and tax it accordingly. So your best defense is to keep track of your records and whatever, however it, uh, falls out, be ready to supply the information that they need. So we're 16 days into the new year, boys and girls. Keep your receipts for your statues, basically. <laughs> well, I, but you know, I think the I think the good thing is though you, I, I feel more comfortable now about getting back to buying and selling. Um, I'll be much more careful with the records that I keep, but I I don't think that it's Armageddon for sales. I, I called the I called the episode Tax Armageddon. Um, <laughs> Because we were, you know, we're all we were all running and running scared, and and I was even speculating some that I was talking about back in the day. I've kind of been through the the digital sale platform since it began back in the late '90s, and it's evolved quite a bit since then. Um, I used to send cash in envelopes uh, to buy things, and large amounts of cash too, and to like Europe to buy collectibles from Europe, and. Uh, and it was back then it was there were many there were much fewer scammers I never got scammed um, but I was thinking we might end up having to go back to the days of cash transactions and and, and you, you know uh, just as we said in the panel Dan, uh, Danny's in California he didn't get a chance to say but Danny's out in California Ark is in the south uh, southeast um, uh, Joe's in the Rust Belt and I'm out in Colorado Nobody. It's very difficult to have face-to-face -face transactions in this in this hobby because there's very few of us, and we're scattered all over the place. Um, it's not like uh, you know, you sell a car. You could certainly do sell a car with with a cash tra transaction. Um, but I guess I feel I'm. I guess I feel much better that I could go back to if uh, if I have the opportunity to sell something, I could sell it with PayPal. Uh, collect goods and services and not sweat the 1099 that's on the way that that as long as I have it documented, um, you know, my profits aren't going to be the actual value on the 1099. Mm -hmm. 
All these laws change and there's a lot of confusion whenever they are enacted. Um, a lot of, t especially if it's a big change and the sky is falling for a few months and then things kind of settle down and we figure out what's going on. The best thing with taxes, um, keep in mind is they're going to happen. Um, we can hate them. Most of us do, but it's, it's, it's part of the life, at least here in the U.S., and a lot of countries have it much, much worse. And we can debate forever whether that's a good thing or a bad thing and what you get for it. But look at it this way. Let's say you had $100 in um, income overall. Even if you're in the 30% bracket, you're going to pay $30 on that. It's going to change in taxes. If you're lower than that, it's going to be a lot less. You still made uh, 70 bucks on the transaction. It's just something to be aware of, to plan for, um, just so you don't get hit at the end of the year. Um, but other than that, keep your transactions, keep your records, and don't let it keep you up at night. That's, that sounds like great sounds advice. Or, Jerry, you could just stop selling stuff. Just keep well, <laughs> I could do that, but then that stops me from buying some things too. <laughs> and I have I have a space issue. So. <laughs> There's only so much room for all this stuff. We all can't just add more trailers, Ark. <laughs> hey, it's getting easier. Why don't you get that first one out of the way? I can do it uh, blindfolded now. So. <clears throat> Okay. Um, I think, I think uh, that settles us down quite a bit. Does anybody else have any uh, questions for Megan? I, I'm good. I, uh, I, I really didn't go into it having too much questions. I mean, I, I guess I was curious to how it was all going to work, but not selling stuff. I kind of was just like pointing at everybody laughing. <laughs> like this is your nightmare now. Um, <laughs> but, but I learned, uh, I learned some stuff that's, not necessarily dealing with the hobby for me to wait and <laughs> and to get separate accounts with my my wife. So this has been a, an eye opener. <laughs> so I I appreciate you coming on and like I said, it's it's been ever since they announced it that people have been kind of going crazy. What what do we do now and how do we change it up or or what'll happen? So I think now, like Jerry said, everybody will kind of go back to doing what they do and, and like, you know, you have so, so much of a profit and you're only paying 30 bucks on it, then they're probably less, uh, less likely to say, Nope, got to keep everything now and be a hoarder like uh, myself. <laughs> so. Just make sure what about you, Danny? Yeah, I'm definitely a little <laughs> right. bit more at ease getting more informed about the situation. Make sure I keep everything, all the records. So we'll all get I'm really good at it. Excel. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Tons of PDF files. Yeah, it's, yep, right. PDF yep. files. Uh, we'll have a nice file structure. We'll have to. We'll all have to get organized or suffer the consequences of when tax time comes around with running around and trying to track down everything. Uh, well, guys, what I'll do is send it all to me, and I'll store it on my computer that I do the show on, and you should have no worries of it ever disappearing. <laughs> But then again, be happy, everybody. We're only halfway through the first month. Like, you, you, this, it's not like we have to go back eight months of like, yeah. we're not discussing this in November of 2022. We're right. discussing it in January. So just be good from here forward type. Right, deal. right. Just get on the ball and, and keep track of it. There's probably going to be some software that comes out too that will help uh, track these sort of things. In fact, uh, somebody post on the on the Facebook page, if you do know of, uh, if you know of some software that, manages collectibles and manages uh cash flow in collectibles that that uh that could be something that we could really take advantage of yeah did, did y'all ask uh, walton's question hmm? oh, about the investment asset <laughs> yes. yeah that's a whole another category that's um <laughs> that's that's is it considered an asset um, we would think of things being an asset like a house or, you know, different big capital assets. If we would consider this an asset and an investment, then it 
doesn't go on the business form, it wouldn't be a Schedule C, it wouldn't be a hobby, it would be a capital asset, and it could the gain on it could be taxed as stocks are, whether you hold it long or short term. Oh, can we take depreciation on that? <laughs> Those do not depreciate. <laughs> well, uh, all right, yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> there are so many different rules, and depending on I, what classification. I think we're, we're, I think we're teasing, but. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so here's where my caveat goes, you know, that this may not apply to you. You may have different uh, things in your situation that make everything I say null and void. So. <laughs> I guess if we go the business route, we'll have to learn a whole lot more about business accounting and, and what to keep track of. We probably should get in touch with someone to, yeah. to help us set up if that's what if that's the way we're going to go. Well, a good um, a lot of people don't, you know, uh, especially depending how big you are as a business. Um, uh, one, I never want to see a receipt. I don't ever want to see a box. Uh, you know, handwritten uh, summaries are great. If you have questions on what, just a general idea of what uh, different expenses you could take, you could look up IRS schedule C as in Charlie. That is the usual form for a small business. And that has the nice little lines that say legal and professional expenses or advertising or things like that, just to give you an idea of categories. So, so I can't just I print, I can't just print everything out and show up at your house on next January with a a two foot by two foot by two foot box of papers. <laughs> Four hundred dollars an hour, and I would be happy to. Serve okay, all right. <laughs> Fair enough. That's, Fair that, enough. that's not going to slow Jerry down. He still will do it. That, <laughs> that's how Jerry works. <laughs> uh, I'll just not box. plow the driveway so that you know he can't get in. <laughs> how many feet we've got? I'll have a plow by then. <laughs> okay all right well um any any closing comments from anybody i think i think we pretty much covered all the questions and and settled down some some concerns i don't have anything thank you very much for coming megan yeah and thank you for having and me i really you, appreciate megan. it and the fact that yeah. you all are looking at this in january Versus December, you know, says a lot. Right. Great. Because we're scared. <laughs> <laughs> or that you are very diligent in making sure that you are prepared for the upcoming year. Yeah. No, scared is probably more. <laughs> All right. And like like Jerry was saying, is you know, a lot of people will watch the replay. So I'm sure if um, somebody sends a good question or anything like that and we want to answer, I'm sure Jerry can reach out to you. Um, if you don't block him, you know, immediately after the, the show, um, the, the few kind just of do kill, a, a follow-up. Just kill Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, I don't think we have any other content planned for today. You guys did, Mark, did you grab pictures or? I did grab pictures. I didn't know if uh, Megan wanted to. Yeah, Megan, if you want to make a graceful exit or um, or if you want to stick around and watch us talk about uh, statues that are coming out and, uh, and what's if going on. If you want to lose more out. hope. Okay, well, okay. thank you very much for coming. Thanks, I really Megan. appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, you. I think you've done us a great service. No, yes, thank you. Thank Have you, a wonderful you. day. All right. You see too. You. Thank you. And then there was four. And, and then there was four. And then there was four. So okay. Yep. So you want to get on to <clears throat> some pictures? Um, so I'm looking. Actually, I'm looking at eBay right now, and the history does go back for me to 2020. That's as far as it goes. Yeah. Well, let me see. Do you want me to take a look? I've had my eBay account since 1998. I can see how far back <laughs> I can go. <laughs> Okay, Ark, I can give you opinions on pictures while they're doing their taxes. <laughs> yeah, this is this is probably not making how how are we doing on viewers? Anybody watching YouTube? Yeah, you're at like tw mid twenties. Okay. All right. Let's see. So if we count, if we rule out all the five, four of us, <laughs> four and probably, yeah. um, probably 
probably <laughs> Megan was in there too. All right. Okay, let's take it away. <laughs> All right. So, do you have me? Uh, you're up. You're uh, up. There. You're I'm up. There. So now we got some picture time. We got a Batman. So I thought we'd start off with a little, and, little Batman Dio. And um, who do you think it is? Deathstroke. Yep. He yep. would be right. Or the Terminator, as he was originally called. You know what? It always. I always think it's funny when they do change names or they give a character, you know, many names, like my favorite X-Men Kitty Pride, how it's been Sprite or um, all the different ones that she had. <clears throat> or, you know, Miss Marvel, when she became binary, is she like, well, I lost those powers, so I can't go by, you know, Captain Marvel anymore. I've got to go by with binary. binary. So <laughs> I often wonder what what's the process, but like you have to change your name. You mean like Batgirl at Oracle? Well, well she, got, she got shot and paralyzed, yeah. didn't she? So, spoiler, spoiler alert. That's so she lost some powers. <laughs> well, we still... she lost the powers in her legs of mobility. I don't think she had any powers to begin with. And yeah. she never donned the costume again. No, she does. She she comes back. Well, not not while she was Oracle, though. I mean, After we, we Oracle, she, she does. Wait, she comes back? Yeah. Read uh, <sighs> the Joker War? <laughs> Or is it Nightfall? Can't believe anyone dead. No, or, not Nightfall. Or disabled. No, uh, maybe it's Joker. It's either yeah, I think it's Joker's War. It's got to be the new stuff after. Um, yeah, yeah, the rebirth. Yeah, Joker War because she got rebirth. I think with uh, Deathstroke, it was probably because the popularity of Terminator, and they said, "Well, we probably don't really want to call this guy Terminator." <laughs> Since... Wait, so New Teen Titans, he was just called the Terminator, not Deathstroke, the Terminator. Uh, geez, I'd have to go back and read now. I have to reread it too, but I couldn't, I wasn't 100 percent sure either. Who made this one? Do you know, Ark? I can't tell you. This is this is classified. Custom, this is custom. We need uh, we need cash here to name drop. Uh, <laughs> so I, 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 I don't know which group, fan which group makes it, but I, I do like it. I think it looks really cool. The, my only gripe, and it's probably a dumb one, is it looks like they bought their costume from the same store. <laughs> With the blue. Well, they've got the lines, the shadow lines, whatever, which make the suit look really cool. But like on both of their legs, it's like they got it from the same manufacturer type thing. You know what I mean? The lines yeah, for, here. For some reason, I was yeah. thinking this was a licensed one sixth by like Coda Baki or something, but or oh. fan art it is. And it's 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 custom. Okay. Yeah. But it but it looks good. Here's Bizarro. another one. Bizarro. Biz Bizarro Hulk, it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that going to be the new thing? Not venomized everything anymore? Now it's going to be all Hulk to Hulk Hulk everything? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Marlon asked me for a link. Oops. Did I give out his name? Brando asked me for a link. <laughs> it's, it's too late now. Um, and I thought Barb was coming in, so I didn't give him one before, but I and told him that we'd get him back, but I just sent him one, so he might pop in. He's Canadian anyway, so he doesn't know anything about these U.S. tax codes. It's too it's too bulky. Did, uh, Jerry, did you ever see? Did you ever see uh, Remy's? Uh, he had the original um, Man of Steel from Sideshow, and he tried to sell it, and then ended up. I guess it was taking too long for him to sell it, so he or changed it to bizarro really no. like he did yeah he, he was able did to he, did he mirror the symbol like bizarro has the s backwards did he do that too he uh did the other version where he's got the chain with a sign on him that's oh, in a few comics oh, right right um yeah. but he was like able to change one. the the color of the suit from a different blue um he painted it himself i mean it it actually looked really good oh wow so no, i think I he was able to sell it after it. he uh changed it up Oh, really? He customized it and sold it, huh? All right. No, I haven't. Uh, I don't remember mm -hmm. seeing that. But it it, uh, it looked really good. Cool. I think somebody could do Bizarro and, and pull it off, but I don't think that was the one that I would buy if I were going after Bizarro. No. Yeah, it's a little, a little bulky. Cyborg Superman so. is after my time, so uh, this look, it looks cool, but uh, I wouldn't be for me. Yeah. I remember uh, Cyborg Batman in the animated series. 
did uh, I know Jerry? You didn't watch that, but Joe, did you watch the animated <laughs> Batman the animated series? Um, I've watched some of it. I was a little after that. I was Batman Beyond. Oh my goodness! That's, that's... I watched them, but I don't remember Batman. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've probably seen it. it. Is Jerry, if you just want to replace episode? Joe with Brando, <laughs> feel free. I'm too young. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you gotta watch all the DC animated, like the the Bruce Tim animated stuff. Yeah, I've probably seen it. I just don't remember it as no, well as should. those ones. Okay, yeah, those so are the good ones. that that's my the homework Batman, for this week is make Superman. my way all the way through Batman animated series. I'll see what and I can Superman. do. Okay. <laughs> uh, but hey, I, I thought Brandon. it was really cool. We're we're hearing ourselves hey, through your speakers. <laughs> Uh, but I <laughs> and I shall mute him until he gets that resolved. <laughs> yeah, you got to mute your uh, YouTube there. Um, but so this piece, I thought that it was the Sideshow life-size bus, and they just customized it. But uh, like I was going to do a side-by-side, -side, and then I was looking at mine, and I was like, no, this is completely different from the ground up, um, which I think it looks really good. Um, I would like to see a little bit more detail in the chest where the sign is. Um, but other than that, that's my only nitpick, and it's, you know, just to have one. So what's the story with Cyborg Superman? Did he replace Superman while Superman was dead, waiting to be reborn? Yeah, he's one of the four that came back. Uh -huh. But uh, his name is uh, Hank Crenshaw or something. Hank Crenshaw, I believe. But is he, uh, is he, he was an part astronaut. human and part cybernetic, or is he completely a robot covered with skin? like the Half and half. Uh -huh. Hmm. I know the Batman animated series. He was a robot that had uh, Bruce Wayne's memories, so he thought the, that he was Batman. In the TV show, they they made or they linked him to um, Martian Manhunter. Oh, did they? Or Martian Manhunter took his name, Hank Crenshaw, I think. Hmm. So then we got uh, sideshow cable where somebody made a uh, custom portrait for it. That oh, nice. Looks pretty cool. I know the guy. I know the custom maker. Yeah. He's the guy that did my Logan. Okay. Cool. I think. I think that's the guy that did my Logan. So this guy told everybody he was shipping it out last year. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. Nine months later. Yeah. Yeah, usually 11, to 11 and a half, but, you know, give it some time. But this, uh, this is what. Himself and then just. So it's not on record. <laughs> 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 this is what uh, the original one looked like so they they changed it up quite a bit and i, I think it looks really good so they yeah, did great yeah i still don't know who cable is so i'll have to one of these <laughs> days i'll get there <laughs> so here you go jerry here's a uh, a cyclops still not the version that you want definitely but... not the version that i want no. I thought you could probably customize this one a lot mm -hmm. easier than some of the other ones. Well, there is that one custom one that's out there. There's a few kits of it floating around. I could go that route, but um, but I think he's just too buff for what I'm looking for. And that's probably the best way for me to go to get a classic uh, um, Cyclops is to just buy that buy that kit and get somebody to paint it up for me. Yeah, um, and that one I should have brought pictures of it, but he, he is really buff. Like he's. He's pretty buff. Yeah, yeah a lot more than this one. That's the kind of the thing that's sold to be back. If I were going to customize one, I would probably just go with the Sideshow one and send it to somebody uh, like Vince Fell that, um, you know, really has the skill set to do it. I think he could pull it off. Um, but that's a lot of money to have invested in a, in a, just an OG Cyclops. I think if I wait long enough, somebody will finally do it. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. All right. So now we got a custom uh, Doomsday, um, which I thought this one looks really cool. Did did y'all ever see the uh, the sideshow one in person? The one that everybody hated because they said it was like a rubber suit. <laughs> not in person. Yeah, not in person. Not I. Yeah. I'm hoping that one day I can acquire that when the uh, price tag on it has, comes down a little bit. Um, the OG. But I'm sure I'll have to wait a very long time because even, yeah, even uh, even What's after everybody for? did all their hate, I mean, it still sold pretty quick. 
What's going on? With uh, that brand one? new retail was twelve hundred. What's, that fist? Brando? What's going on with that right arm? It's like it's dislocated. This is uh this is a custom right arc. Uh, it's probably more so the angle of the yeah, it's a custom. Uh, it shouldn't look like that. But, yeah, it's probably more so the angle of the picture that makes it look odd. But it comes with the uh, two portraits. Yeah. Which have y'all uh have y'all read the the comic that this character uh, shows up in, in uh, what's it, Death of Superman? Yeah, not me. Oh, you never <laughs> even read the Death of Superman yet? <laughs> nope. Jerry? He, he shows up before that, though, doesn't he? Uh, like slowly, like they did, yeah. like a, a countdown. countdown. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, he just showed up all in that that green uh, jumpsuit, and then yeah. slowly his suit got tore up. Yeah, which I know in the but they did a, a cool... cartoon movie of it, but they make it yeah. where the whole Justice League are helping him, like the Wonder Woman and all them, uh, Green Lantern. But in the comics, it is people like I think Booster Gold and like the yeah. the C Who's and D the... listers are the ones that were were fighting them. I want to. There's a uh, Omni now. Should How I buy the Omni and this? never read that? <laughs> <laughs> Just get the digital version. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'll do this time if I. I don't have any space for Omnis anymore. I've got so many freaking Omnis. Yeah. So this is from uh, Dune, which other than Jerry, I'm assuming the rest of you have seen the movie Dune. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jerry, did you watch the original Dune? No, I didn't. I missed that what? one too. Yeah. Is sorry. You've never seen Dune? The original? Never seen it. Damn. Sorry. It's crazy. <laughs> Nope, never never seen it. You, Is you it good? Any, you don't have any. It's uh, it's a really good movie. You're not. In, you don't really want to see it. You don't. You're not gonna go back there and check it. Uh, there's a high activation energy to get me to watch anything on television. <laughs> so it's the stars kind of have to really align. And uh, <laughs> I did watch something. What did I? Oh, I started watching The Boys season two. So um, I just recently started watching that series. Uh, uh, like last week, and I, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah I like yeah. season one a lot. Season I like two. season one also, and then I yeah. and then season two kind of came and went. And I yeah, never... I, I didn't make it all the way through season two. Did it start to decline yeah. in season two? For those of you who've seen it's it, it's pretty. It's really graphic. Yeah, oh, I thought yeah. it was okay, but not as great as season one was. The by far the best. Yeah, the oh, two. Right. I think with season one, there was the whole new. You know, it was something new and. And it was a different take on superheroes. It was, it yeah. was, it was pretty cool. And uh, season two is just kind of more of the same old. And this is the way it I feel has, about it. Has that kind of Watchmen feel to it, doesn't it? <laughs> Watchmen, yeah, yeah but more fun. entertaining though. I thought. Yeah. Actually, the second series of Watchmen, I did watch that the HBO um, serial series. Yeah. yeah. And it dragged, but. At the end, it really picked up. I thought they did a good job at the end of it. Yeah, Walton is saying that season two starts off slow and then picks up. Um, that's probably why I never finished the the second half. It was just going so slow, and I probably just lost interest and didn't finish it. So I have to go back. What about uh, uh, James Gunn's series? Uh, what's it called? Uh, Peacemaker. Peacemaker. Yeah. We'll we'll get there. Watch we'll get to all the <laughs> oh, special oh. shows and movies that. <laughs> <laughs> that have came out uh, or been like, available much easily. Or Dune statue looks amazing, but I just yeah. don't know enough of the character yet to invest. To they start a new rabbit hole. Yeah, <laughs> like I have yeah. to watch. Well, there's are, still two uh, more movies to go. Any of you guys getting this? Is it good? Is the Dune movie good? The new one? So far, I felt it was. From what I've seen, I like it. Do you like I'm MCU stuff? If I had, yeah. <laughs> I saw where that was going. <laughs> I I would want the original Paul Atreides statue over this. Oh yeah, Man. you you want to yeah. go back? Have you? Did you? Did the rest of the panel? Did the rest of you guys see the original Dune? I did. I did. And it is don't remember garbage. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. I still want it. <laughs> I just remember there, Sting was in it. A lot of people uh, hate Robocop too. I still want that Robocop. 
I remember Sting was in it also, but I didn't see it. I remember that was the big that was the big buzz at the time that Sting was in it. Yeah, which I mean, I watched the new Dune first, and then I went back and watched the oh. old one because the the effects were were very limited back then. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it was it was difficult. Which they it was cool seeing because they used a lot of the same lines and stuff like that um, between the two. So that was interesting, but like I, I didn't about, watch all what of. About the, what about the Baron arch? If you had to compare the two Baron. Yeah, that the the old version was very very strange. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, I guess. I guess that just uh, you know, because he had all these little these surgeons around him operating on him while he was talking and stuff, which was really cool. Yeah, 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 but he was he was kind of nasty, kind of a slob. But but for this this piece, this Doom piece, I thought it was unique. Uh, they did a fabric mask. I've never seen anybody do a fabric mask. Always the cape or a poncho or jacket type thing. But I've never seen the mask. So, but it yeah, looks I think this great. Is, yeah, I don't know how many people will be looking to invest that much into the movie though. Yeah, yeah, this isn't going to yeah. be cheap. No, uh, never is. So now we have another uh, custom uh, Batman that uh, oh, I think Keaton? looks pretty pretty oh. good. Your your favorite, Mister Mom? Yeah, Bill Belasjowski. Did you look up Bill Belasjowski? That's who Michael Keaton is. Go watch that movie and then tell me that that guy should be playing Batman. <laughs> Bill what? Uh, Bill, Bill Belasjowski from from uh, Night Shift. It predates Batman. Oh, that's nice. so that was and I know they they're not starting to do this. They've been doing it, but they're they sell uh Kodo Kodo Bikio now. Yeah, that Bushido or and did y'all ever get into these uh this type of line? Yeah. What was that, Jerry? That that it's called like Bushido or something like that, right? Yeah, Bushido, yeah. I um I won one on sideshow yeah. of Pennywise and I sent it to Bar. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a couple of Kotobukiya's. I remember that one. Yeah, but not, that one was pretty not cool. This, not this style. Yeah. So this is from uh, Chris collection. He just got an Electro. And I, I thought it was really cool. Yeah. I've never seen anybody. Cool. Yeah. You know, everybody uses the black strand that it comes with. And he went on Amazon right. and bought this yellow wire. And, the and, lights and, up and it makes flickers. it look really good. Yeah, it looks fantastic. It's uh, uh, I, I he sent it to me, uh, sent me the picture and said what I thought, and I was like, "Wow! Once you post this, I, th I bet a lot of people are going to do this." And he, he wasn't quite sure; he didn't seem quite sure of himself. But it really makes that thing pop. It looks like there's current flowing through, and you know, yeah. uh, that that gift that he did was really, yeah, really great. I mean, it, it is it's stunning. That looks great. I think people sleep on that Sandman yeah. though. I love this that is, Sandman. Of course, the I've Sandman got Sandman, is, but I really want I mean, to get that Sandman is a fantastic statue. Yeah. It's gigantic, but yeah, you yeah, can still true. get that because of the large numbers. So yeah. that one hasn't dried up yet, really. I think you could still get a good deal on it. Yeah, I think that's worth adding. Out on all these videos, after all after these seeing videos. after seeing uh, Chris's display here, I'm thinking, man, I should jump on that Sandman while, while <laughs> yeah. I still can. Because. <laughs> really I think he's still only like nine hundred dollars. You can usually. I think find you can him. probably even find him cheaper than that. You used to be able to get him for like five hundred bucks. Yeah, I got wow. mine for seven hundred. Yeah, when that piece dries up, they don't make Sandman's every day, and that's a really good. No, one. that's it, it's fantastic. I mean, it's uh, it's OG too. It's like back from the yeah. you know the early that appearances before they period. before they did that weird uh, costume where he had the mask on. That this is from like Spider Man Four kind of Sandman. Yep. Yeah, that's one thing they got right in the Raimi movie, right? So I think it should. Yeah, right. yeah. I think I better get on yeah. that. You're making cleaner away from. <laughs> Another thing to add to my list. I've been trying not to buy stuff. Just keep your receipts, man. <laughs> better believe. So now we... uh, he's just missing the Green Goblin and Rhino. Actually, the the things I buy from collectors is going to be harder to keep track of if I ever sell something that I buy from a collector. Because if I buy it, you know, on eBay or whatever, there's a digital trail. But 
Yep. I'm going to have to get busy. Uh, this oh, is Mystique. This piece, man. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, pretty cool. I like it. I passed on it because I have, I already have a Mystique. So I figured I was trying to be responsible, but it, it came out really nice. The headstand is pretty cool too because yeah. they, they made a headstand for it. So all three of all three of them go together. All three Isn't of the like optional heads. Might have to pay double yep. on eBay. What's that? Might have to pay double on eBay for this. I'm not gonna get it. I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Is this have, by the same people that did the Wolverine where he's like sitting on a bunch of bodies or standing on a bunch of bodies? No, this uh, go back to the first picture. Arc. I don't want. I don't know about that face. Yeah, that's <laughs> the the picture where she's sitting on all the bodies. It just it reminds me of that. See that can one. right there? That tells you who did it. <laughs> okay. The only nitpick I have is the rifles. They're all like just, they're all sticking up. Yeah. Like it feels like yeah, I can see that. Place naturally, I guess. There's but another I, one that I, came I, out I, right about this point. time too. There's another. Uh, Mystique that was that was open for PO. That's like this. It was really done. It looks a lot like this one, but it's different. And it, it was she was nice. like standing, right? Yeah, I think yeah. yeah. I think her legs looked a little long in that one. This one and, looks really well. If you look, this one here, they, they don't. There's not a good picture of it, but there was one when when they were showing the renders. The chest yeah. looks kind of weird. The chest this looks one? like it's yeah. The chest looks like it's caved in. Oh no. Hmm. Yeah, on this one. Yeah, that's a cool stand. So you had mentioned yeah, the, that like this that. has got a stand. Is this something that's real popular in the custom world? What? No, this what? is new. This is this is kind of innovative. So that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. it's like nicely composed, and you just—it's almost like a statue in itself, right? Yeah, right. this, this they did a great job on this headstand. Good work. Who's this? Raven. Now we have a raven. Uh, raven. So this wouldn't be a raven for me because it's not like the OG. Uh, the OG raven always had her hood kind of masking her face. Right. And right. her cape always made those, like it loops up and makes uh, like like raven wings. And okay. That, yeah. That's what I would need. I guess this is probably accurate to some comic version, but I wouldn't. I, I'd love I to have know, Raven, though. but it, it not this one. Newer, newer. Even when Raven first came out, she was almost very ladylike, wasn't she? Very who? Very ladylike, like her form. This looks very like teenage. Oh yeah, this might be kind of. I mean, I think it's more loosely. Kind of like merged with the TV show and yeah. comics, I guess. Yeah. It's like a hybrid. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, so this isn't an I think you're right, Danny. Yeah. Yeah, because from no. what I remember, the, the Teen Titans, she, when the George Perez Teen Titans, she was very, yeah, like her, very her, feminine, like ladylike. Her costume's in, blue, in too. It's not purple. Yeah. It reminds well, there was me of another picture. Absolutely, 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 Danny. She was an adult in the, in, in the Perez New Teen Titans. Or late teen, I would say. Yeah, yeah just, I think they were all kind of like in their early twenties, even though they were called the Teen Titans. <laughs> That's the feel I got from reading it back in the day. You know, they were all adults; they were all living on their own kind of thing. They weren't. They weren't the, just a, a band of sidekicks like the like what the Teen Titans were originally. The style of it makes me think of Iron Studios, though. The base it looks like it fit like right in with other bases they've done. I have no idea what scale this is, but. Yeah, but her costume was blue, wasn't it, Jerry? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah that's, that's true. costumes wrong color. Yeah. It had another picture, but uh I thought for Jerry's sake we would not display it. It shows the back side of this statue where oh. it's uh it's a little revealing. Did that offend you? Mm. <laughs> no, I mean it doesn't, bother me. it doesn't bother me. So we got a uh, another custom uh, Robin, this is. What the hell is this? Which Robin is this? So, this is, a this Tim is Drake. the. No, no, not Tim Drake. Yeah, uh, Tim Drake. Damien. Not Tim Drake. Uh, Damien. His, yeah, his Damien. son. Batman's son. His son. Or 
Bruce Wayne. He's, yeah. he's supposed to be Bruce Wayne's son. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. And that's through, in uh, that's in through, regular continuity. Uh, regular Talia continuity. Abu? Correct with Talia. Yep. Oh, that looks like uh, almost hair punched. Uh, yeah, it does. Buckles or whatever. It might just be mm -hmm. a render, though. Yeah, it's just I mean, a render. Face looks very realistic. It ain't like they just superimposed a photograph of someone onto that. Yeah. Well, did y'all ever watch Just Go With It with uh, Jennifer oh. Aniston and Adam Sandler? No. No. God, you guys got to watch some TV. <laughs> so there's one of the kids that are in, that's Jennifer Aniston's uh, kid, looks just like this kid. So, oh, yeah. but none of you will know because you don't <laughs> watch TV. Well, what, Walton what wants to know if you think you're going to excite me too much if you show the raven. So we have another uh, custom uh, Superman, which I think this one looks pretty good. Obviously, it's you know not finished, but so far what they've got, um, yeah. I like this. I like that he's not too ripped. I wish, like, he obviously doesn't have a 12 pack with his abs, but I would have even liked to see it toned down a little bit on his uh his thighs something looks a little off with the diameter of his arms compared to his chest and thighs yeah, yeah. I agree. and see, i don't know what they're doing with those sleeve cuffs it's the proportions of like the yeah yeah the arms like the waist to the uh to the legs i don't know just looks like he's tensed up but Almost not wearing any costume. It's painted on. <laughs> yeah, it's like it doesn't have texture to the costume at all. Yeah, which is which is okay, but that costume <clears throat> looks like it's literally painted onto his body. Whereas yeah. it, it it does like it's so thin, it doesn't look like material on him. But I mean, that's how Hugo most says Superman look. does not skip leg day. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't skip leg day. I mean, that's that's just the style that they do now. Um, every, I mean, just looking around in my collection, it looks like every suit has been painted on for the most part. Um, but you, so. but you have these strands of like material across his legs. Right. And every detail in his legs. Muscle wise is there while while you have these strands yeah. of material. I like yeah. this. So I this I don't like the version of the eyes, but this is a good. That's a good pose. I saw yeah, this. this. Is like I saw a this. Classic McFarland style. I this is half turn. scale. Oh, oh wow. wow! Really? Yeah. yeah. Is it? Yep, and it's got uh, two different bases that you can pick. One of them is a uh, to hang in the corner of your on your wall. And then they've got this uh, other version of the base. Wow. This is a custom? Yep. Who does it, whatever comes with other portraits? I don't know. I'd like yeah, it without like the, the McFarlane the McFarlane on the McFarlane eyes. Yeah. Those are really good uh, it's good muscles on that one. Half scale. Man, that's gonna be big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you are you sure that's half scale? I'm pretty sure it is. It doesn't look like something that would be half scale, but, but who knows these days? Well, I mean, a uh, half scale Spider Man, I mean, it's you know going to be the ha same height as your quarter scale piece just because of his pose. Yeah, true. The, the one that Sideshow did, that was the fabric suit. Um, I never saw it in person, but pictures made it always look much smaller. It's a nice arm, though. It's a nice arm stretched out there. Yeah. Do y'all like uh, when statue companies do the webbing real thick like this? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, it fits with this one because it's the McFarlane style. So that's yeah, why I exactly. like it. Could have had some little strands kind of coming yeah. out too. Yeah, I'm not even a spotty guy. I like. I yeah. really like this. Who's piece. getting it? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's roasting me in the chat for for uh, yawning. I guess I guess yawning. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Walton. All right, so now we've got Mar Ark's favorite Storm. version of Storm. <laughs> Is this Storm? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not familiar with the costume. Yeah, the costume looks like they kind of went their own way, um, which I know when she went Mohawk, she was 
Oh, that one. Uh, you know, she changed her costume, but it wasn't to this extreme. Not that I remember. Is there? A, can you zoom into that somehow? Like, oh, there it is. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Mm. Attitude. That's yeah. extreme. <laughs> yep. Oh no, I kind of like. Kind of like it. This was, of course, before <laughs> she lost her like powers. I think we should do a group buy for Ark and send this. You like it? <laughs> I kind of oh, like goodness. it. Yeah, I kind of like Jerry, it do we have I any would, other people that are waiting backstage that we can replace? <laughs> I can admire it. There's always someone. What was that, uh, Brando? There's always someone waiting. <laughs> like, without the jacket, it looks better, I think. I, I agree. What, is the, what does it say on the back of her jacket? Something about humans? No, no more humans. No more humans. I think it's something that goes probably uh, is, is it just say humans or is there something like I think it says no more humans or no more humans yeah. I mean they could have made her a little prettier I could, I'll say that in the face yeah but I like I the rawness a, I like how kind of realistic second, uh, like a real, cool. this could be a real storm with attitude yeah, I'm just not a fan of the character. I mean, I, I know that's a shock. I've only said that this is the first time I've ever said it. Um, you mean you hate Storm? No, he I love the Storm. Just the Mohawk. Well, it's the character. It's the character. I, I love Storm, just not the... I've given up Pope Mohawk <laughs> version. So now we have another, another Superman. We're a little Superman heavy tonight. <laughs> yeah, this is nice. Um, this is... Yeah, this is a good one. Yeah, how do y'all feel about bases like this where they, you know, shrink things down? Like, for example, the the Bat Cave um, that came out with Prime. I, I was just thinking about that, Arch. Do y'all? Uh, this. Yeah, I could live with it. I mean, Not me. I, I I I get it. I get some people that would drive them crazy because of the scale so far it. off. But yeah. that that drives me bananas, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen one where uh, who is it? It's a licensed company that did one with Spider Man, where they did um, a smaller building that they're swinging around or something like that. Oh yeah, there's one with Batman too, like DC Direct or, or whatever the whatever the uh, uh, entry level kind of one sixth DC. Stuff is there's uh Frank Miller, um, Batman and Robin swinging over New York City, and New York City's really small scale, right? Yeah. There. Joe, do you uh, your DC line is it mainly uh Batman driven, or do you do you have any Superman? No Superman, I'm, I'm definitely on the Batman side of things and Gotham side of things. Oh, you gotta have a Superman though. Ah, <sighs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Look to the light, my friend. Yeah, the, I don't know. I he just like the, the Batman and his villains and the way he does things. I just I appreciate that way more than Superman. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, they've uh, they've uh, slowly started to come out with more and more of the Superman villains. But I thought Lex Luthor from from Sideshow was incredible, and nobody really talked about it. And you could get the exclusive. What was that? Sorry, but what's happening under his S there? Like by under you, like where his chest, his uh, chest meets in the middle. Does it look like it's kind of going up there? You're talking about here, right on He's the symbol. Just, uh, yeah, they just definition. Uh, yeah, they're adding definition. Yeah, I think the uh, the Brainiac, whoever did the Brainiac from the game, is like uh, I think that statue's fantastic. Um, now Walton's roasting Superman. <laughs> how about how about it, Walton? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's as far as reading comics, it's a terrible read. It's boring. He's too exactly. powerful. But yeah. as far as the cartoon and the movies went, um, I liked him. Or even in the Injustice games, I, I liked that story of it. Um, I guess well, you like Man of Steel too, but that wasn't Superman. Yeah, I mean Red Sun. <laughs> Uh, Red Sun was a good uh, Superman story. I enjoyed it. Yeah. 
I don't know. Batman just does things better, in my opinion. Like he'll he'll break some arms to make the point, and I just don't think Superman's got that in him. That's the Superman. Huh? Anyway. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I thought that was nicely done. So now we've got uh, Superman. Superman kills millions when he's fighting over the city. You just don't see it. Yeah. Hey, I, it's just not for me. Superman's not my guy. Batman is where it's at. This has got some issues. Oh, yeah, does it? Look at that chin and face. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> is this even constitute a Terminator? Like, <laughs> so this is obviously not. That's the go back to the statue. But this was the the movie. Kind of looks like John Leguizamo as the Terminator. So. <laughs> And of course, the the picture quality on this is terrible because the the movie's a hundred years old. Um, hey. But I used to think <laughs> hey. I used to think that the uh, the face looks way off until I started looking at pictures. I think the face looks way off. Yeah, it's way off. <laughs> it's way off. <laughs> I wouldn't say way off. I would say if they fixed his nose, um, no. it'd probably look better. The chin and this is what's got me messed up. Uh, there's something and off about it. Pushed in and the hair too. The lip is. The, there's not too much uh, <laughs> happening. For, Isn't there uh, a video game character that looks like this guy? He's, he's inhaling <laughs> his top lip. You see the distance between his nose is that and Duke, his mouth. Duke Nukem or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's inhaling his lip. Yeah, yeah I see what you mean. Yeah, the the lip is a little too uh, too high on this piece, maybe. But even with it, you know, being off, if you look at this, you know who it is. It's either Terminator or it's uh, Duke Nukem. A brunette, Which, dude. No, Duke none Nukem. of you know who. Duke yeah, this, this is tough. Video there's too much. Never there's mind. too much other good Never Terminator mind. stuff. Out. I got it, Art. I got it. <laughs> yeah, too much other yeah, good sure. Terminator stuff out to take the swing. All on right, that. so now we're gonna go on to. Uh, <laughs> yeah sideshow oh my gosh did you guys sideshow side uh, ran him. over uh, and on six show yesterday yeah. which one Sorry, yeah. what? I didn't know uh, they, they were all bashing it I watched the replay of it today sideshow stuff so I, I think it looks really good um, my only uh, issues it's kind of what we kept talking about when uh, when Pudgy was here. Is they're going a little crazy with the uh, the reflection paint. Yeah, I, I like it. it. Like I, they're doing it more. And this more. is a, this is after Bagley, right? This is kind of like Bagley's venom. It's kind of like a Eric Larson's. A little. It? It's all right. I've got I've got a venom Eric coming Larson. that that'll be good enough for me. I don't I don't have to. Venom was kind like, of right at the end of my time, so I don't have to have like. Yeah, I same thought the here, face here. looks like Eric Larson's. Six venom statues, but uh, I like, I like the shorter teeth though. D, yeah. but I, I, I like, think it's a good piece. I, I mean, money know. wise, it's gonna be a deal, it's gonna be a you know, yeah, compared to what yeah. people are paying for venom statues now, it's it's gonna be a bargain, but yeah, I, I don't like the glow. I, I wish they would just stop. I wish Sideshow would just stop with trying to. I brought up a point on another it's show, becoming a Sideshow uh, trademark type of thing for them to do. Oh, yeah. I went back and looked at the OG uh, Vader, Vader mythos. Yeah. Oh, you, that thing is horrible. A, a I, I don't get of his face thing needs to be or his eyes. Come on. A venom? Right there. It looks like kind of like beady eyes that the way that those, those two little black parts yeah. curve in. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. And I can't unsee <laughs> that now. Well, Jerry, yeah. I yeah, was going to wait. Uh, yeah. I was going to wait till the end. Did you open your Huntress yet? Because she's got that, and I was curious to know your opinion on that. I did not open it yet. I was, okay. That was on my agenda for today, and I didn't get to it. But tomorrow, I'm not, I'm off. So tomorrow, Huntress and Swamp Thing are coming out. Gotcha. Made some room for it. I just didn't get to the, the unboxing part. Are you talking about the new Huntress? It's already out? I mean, not Huntress. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, Canary. I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that was my fault. Yeah, Black Canary. Oh. Black yeah, I was saying yeah, I think she has like, like a purple, she has like a purple overspray. Yeah, purple overspray. 
Yep, right up under her boots. I'll be curious to hear your opinion. Uh, I'll probably week. hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but even yeah, you know, even yeah. with the the glow, and I, I guess some people don't like the green in the base. Yeah, I. It's good. It's good. It's like Actually, you said. You're still getting a great deal. The glow looks pretty good. This thing here, is huge. The glow looks better here than it does on Mythos uh, Vader. That's for sure. Yeah. That's because they didn't know where to yeah. stop on the Mythos Vader. <laughs> they just kept going. The guy yeah. didn't let his. I think they just him. ran out of black paint, and there was some orange <laughs> around the shop, and that's what they did. It they finished him off. Somebody tripped. Yeah. Somebody needs to take the OG Mythos Vader and put him on top of a bowl of Doritos. <laughs> or cheese puffs, cheese puffs. You're, you're, being, you're being hard. You're being hard, man. <laughs> How dare you? You see, that's what I actually like about the the uh, metal spare. You like that orange? I like the fact that those guys had enough balls to do that. It's that's just a too, little much. Actually, just it, yeah. It yeah it's, too it's too bad. There, it's too bad the talent didn't match up with the balls. Then it went out. Yeah, yeah. It might have pulled it off there. It might have pulled it off. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're uh on a variant <laughs> version of the wonder woman on on horseback uh the wow. gold version that's kind why? of weird why and this is oh my third, gosh you know what they're gonna do a whole line they're gonna release <laughs> prime one hush superman oh boy folk oh, faux, wow. bro faux bronze, faux bronze. That? it wouldn't surprise me um, absolutely they're gonna do that Dude, and I think that's to get one. Yeah, there you go. So you're telling me I should have held out for the for the gold bat cave instead of getting the black one? <laughs> no, I don't think that's the case. Yeah, unless you want it to look like it's a brass or bronze statue. No. Um, but I've heard some people say that they think this looks better than the the other version, the colored version. Really? No. No. Come on. This isn't going to have so, the uh, soft, I, the soft hair either. With the well, original they can't hair, really, right? Yeah, the original had the hair to it on the horse. Yeah, yeah. Well, but I bet you that's where they're going with this. What do you, I mean, see that aspect of it? I like, I like this. I wouldn't have mind if, if the hair was sculpted yeah. on the old. I, I would have preferred it. Hmm. But uh, yeah, I agree with that. You guys have uh, full bronze pieces? I do not. No. I wanted to get some Bowens I back in the day, but I never did. I remember them. Like this, I could, I like this a lot. And if it wasn't for the price and for my kids that throw stuff constantly, <laughs> um, I could easily see this as, you know, putting it on, you know, my table right as I walk into my house, you know, next to my bowl of where I put my throw my keys, you know, like away from the rest of the collection, just as a standalone piece. Well, if they're going to go this route, they might as well go found, go to a foundry and and have them cast it in real bronze. In actual bronze yeah. <laughs> it'll cost it'll cost quite a bit more, but heck, if you're going to do it, it, let's do it for real. Yeah, but this piece, I mean, without them doing that, it was still. Oh, Greg says they only made eighty eight of these. I was going to ask that, like, do they drastically lower the ES on these special ones like this? So, right. yeah, there you Apparently go. Apparently they do. Yeah, I would think so. Uh-oh, somebody, uh, Edwin's giving me the business. I'm in rare <laughs> form tonight. Oh, it's because I was ripping on the OG uh, Mythos Vader. Which I, I still think that's the best Vader. I think you're crazy. <laughs> well, I think it would be great if you repainted in black like Vader's I, supposed to be. It, I've seen it repainted. It's, doesn't, Conceptually, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great it's, piece. Yeah. So this we got another one, dio. Jerry, did you get this? Yeah, I'm a little disappointed. I, this is a custom paint. I hope the factory doesn't go this route because I think the gray is too blue looking. Yeah, it could be the lights though. Well, well, but look at. I mean, her skin's mm. supposed to be like a, a bluish white, white, but her the well, it's Wolverine. Look, that looks yeah. really blue in that in the gray blue. part of his costume there. Yeah, I'm hoping that the factory doesn't try to go with this, and if they paint it gray, right? Yeah, I have this. That's it looks nice. good. I remember seeing that one. When, when are you supposed to get this? Is it going to be a while from now, or do you have uh, it already? Yeah, the um, the factory doesn't have their prototype painted yet, as far as I know. So 
we're 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 several months away. Chinese New Year is going to shut the whole thing down for probably a month. So uh, this statue, though, is probably a year and a half in the making. Yeah. Hmm. How much? Yeah, was Walton's that asking. How much? Walton's asking if P uh, PM me random all, cutouts. Uh, random cutouts in our costume. Oh, you mean accurate to the the comic source? <clears throat> I'm not sure. No, no, those are those are supposed to be gray fabric. I think that's the, I think. the thing everybody's doing. But but yeah. it's kind of the same color as her skin tone. This is a custom paint, though. Right. I don't think this is what the factory's going with. Somebody right. got somebody bought it as a kit, got it to a painter, and and took pictures. Yeah. The sculpt on it looks really good though. Yeah. 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 How many dominoes do you have, Jerry? Well, I sold I sold one to um, Anthony, so uh, because I knew this was coming, and um, so right now I have one domino, just the sideshow. Oh, okay. I did That's have good. the I did have the Franco one, um, but I sold that to Anthony, and then I have another custom domino coming from the line that did the all the other X Force. So, what makes mm. you like Domino? Since she's like a '90s and plus character yeah that's a good question <laughs> no answer <laughs> wish i had you a don't good even answer. know anything about cable and i wish i had a good you know, answer liking, for you liking his girlfriend domino i like so domino has the powers um that the Gambit luck. should have had yeah that's what i like i like dominoes i like the whole idea about the the idea to the i the i the ability to manipulate the statistical outcome of a situation. I think that's really a cool. Um, it's kind of like what Longshot's powers were, but Longshot yeah. is, is kind of like a. No, but he, come, but he's as far as not a mutant, though, right? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think he is for some reason. Where'd the powers come from then? Well, he has powers, but I don't think he's technically a mutant. From what I remember, let me Google. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, I don't Jared, know about what's that. your favorite? Who's your favorite comic book artist? My favorite artist. So I'm all. I'm really weird. Whenever anybody tries to pin me down on favorite to favorite anything, um, I don't like to limit myself into <laughs> one thing. But favorites, I could give you a couple. Uh, yeah, top five or something. Um, uh, historical artists. Um, uh, John Byrne was a favorite uh, back in the day, especially inked by Terry Austin. Um, you know, Terry Austin makes everybody look good. So, uh, and, and Byrne, I think when he inked himself, or if he's got other inkers, they're they're too heavy handed. But but Terry Austin could really bring out his stuff. Um, George Perez, I thought George Perez was fantastic. And then again, especially when inked by Romeo Tanghal. Um, that those Teen Titans and, and that Wonder Woman that they did were those yeah. were fantastic. Um, I really loved that stuff. Uh, I like uh, I like older Neil Adams stuff. Um, yeah. That uh, you know I was really into his style back in the day. Modern comic artists, I I think David Finch can do no wrong. Every time I see stuff that that guy does, yeah. I'm just like. I'm drawn to it. I, I think I have to figure out how to get me a nice original Dave Finch piece because this stuff is gritty. His Wonder it is, Woman, it nice is. Stuff? It's gritty, but it has his line work is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, he puts so much, all the puts so much the effort box. into it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> does a lot of, lot of hatching. Yeah. So Longshot yeah. is a created humanoid life form from the Mojoverse. Okay. <laughs> but what do you think about Michael Golden? I like Michael Golden for back his old Micronaut stuff. Um, yeah. You know, I, I mean, well, there might have been some. I still want some still puberty want, back I, in the day in, involved in, in that, one. but um, but uh, yeah, I like I like Michael Golden. I liked um, he did draw occasionally for X Men, but he did the whole Micronauts for a big long run, and uh, I think it was maybe. Because Jackson Geis was on that also. Jackson Geis is another good artist. I feel. Yeah, yeah, I like him. I like really him hard. too. He did like a lot of Hercules. Jackson. 
Geis? Jackson Geis. Yeah, he also goes by Butch. Butch Geis. That's right. Yeah, I think he did a few Thors. He did. He he was he did the Micronauts run for like I think after Michael Golden left Micronauts, I think he picked it up. Oh, okay. Edwin, do you prefer? <laughs> uh, I guess. <laughs> Arcs, Arcs, uh, answering. I just Edwin read that too. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, but I mean, I like a lot. I mean, I like Frank Miller stuff. I like what Frank Miller did, and his 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 stuff was not. I, I don't know. It, I don't know the t- artistic terms for it, but it was very different from um, kind of what Byrne was doing with X Men. What what he did with. Daredevil. I liked Frank Miller until he changed the tides for sure. He changed the tides with his style, you know. But then, yeah, when he changed his style, I wasn't kind of so. When he was on Daredevil from whatever one fifty eight, I think was his first issue. And those days, those were great. I loved Frank Miller then. When he kind of got, I mean, I can I can live with his Dark Knight stuff, um, but and then the Sin City, I was kind of like less of a fan of that. It's Daredevil where he got me hooked. Right, right. I like Walter Simonson, and he's kind of abstract. He, um, of sometimes he goes a little bit too bananas. What about uh, Tim Sale? Tim Sale does like an anime kind of version. Yeah, he's more stuff, like right? cartoony. Yeah, he did. He did some of the uh, hotter Batman Basically. stuff. He did like the Long Halloween. Yeah, he's kind of like a later Frank Miller type. Yeah, he he definitely put his own spin on it. I'll have to go and look at it because I know of him, but I don't really know very much what he's done. I like Capullo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, he does some fantastic work on Batman. What about uh, Weapon X guy, uh, the miniseries? Um, Barry Smith? Winter? Yeah, Barry Smith. Yeah, his stuff is fantastic. I mean, he has he has issues with faces. You can always pull out a Barry Windsor Smith. Yep, okay. Whenever Barry, you yeah, see a face, that's... you know right away it's Barry Windsor Smith. Yeah. He has that well, cookie cutter. But, but he does a fantastic job with with textures and details. Oh, uh, detail. In fact, I just bought. He did a tech. He did a book called Monsters, and he'd been working on it for forty years. I bought a copy of it, and I'm going to read that one of these days. That's uh, that's that's one guy's style. That every time I look at his artwork, I, 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 I can't figure out how he does it. Like he's got such a stylized way of inking and drawing and stuff that. You know, when you're looking at his work here, how did how does he even approach working out that stuff? He know? did a he had a long hiatus in comic books. He was he did all the Conan stuff. He did early Conan in the seventies, yeah. yeah. and then he took this before, high- before Buscema, right? Yeah, and then he took a break, and he didn't do anything um, through the late seventies into the early eighties, and then he kind of came back to comics on X Men. But everybody was crazy about Barry Smith at that time. And so and I, that's when I owned my comic shop. I speculated on his return to comics, which was X-Men 186. Uh, uh-huh. It's the cover with Storm when she's powerless well, Storm, and Forge on the on – the, Forge and Storm were on the cover. That's Ark's, fa- Ark's favorite oh. Storm. Uh. <laughs> that's it, but Danny. I bought, you're like, out of here. That was great. I don't remember. I think – I, I bought hundreds of copies of that, speculating that that would be a big deal. And uh, how long did you have your comic book shop for, Jared? A couple of years. Couple of years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Years. So I always wanted to know. So what were like the big? I guess when I was into comics, like the big ones were like X Men number one with like over one million print job from Jim Lee and Spider Man number one, Tom McFarlane. So what were like the big ones like those? Do you think? Wow, well, there was uh, that was the biggest ever. Well, X Men number one was the the largest selling comic book yeah. in history. Um, but so, big, well, like, how big was like Dark Knight Returns? Um, less than three hundred. That was a slow creeper, man. That was oh, slow. Wow. They did multiple printings. They underestimated, but but, um, but I would say it probably sold as well, especially once it caught on. Caught on. It it probably sold as well as X Men of that. Um, of that time period, and X Men was selling about two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand copies a month. So it was yeah. X Men, Spider Man, Spider Man. I mean, Spider Man was diluted amongst uh, four titles, but you know, Spider Man's always been a big heavy hitter for Marvel because they can 
they can run multiple titles and still sell them. Back in the day, back in the eighties, there was Amazing Spider-Man, Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man, Marvel Team Up, and um, Web of Spider-Man were all coming out. So every week you had a Spider-Man title release. Um, and I remember, a- I remember my friends uh, picking up the the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, and just I had- like after <laughs> i had several copies of that i mean i remember so um we had a convention in lauder hill which is a, a kind of a suburb of fort lauderdale and kevin eastman and peter laird came to the convention uh peter laird doesn't travel at all anymore but this was back in this was this was back before there was a cartoon this was you know turtles three had just come out and it was so it was still it was black and white. Uh, the color, there was color, one color on the cover. So Turtles 1 has that red. Turtles 2, I think, had had a blue color. And Turtles 3 had like an aqua marine kind of color. And that right. Turtles 3 had just come out. Uh, those guys came to that con. In fact, you can still find um, the program from that con. The, bo- the program for that con goes for stupid money, thousands of dollars. It's called Turtle Mania Number 1. It was the only Turtle Mania that was ever released. But if you look it up, I Google it. It's just, it's Turtle Mania number one. It the the promoter got Eastman and Laird to draw a picture of one of the turtles sitting in a uh, in a ch- in a chase lounge underneath a palm tree sipping a cocktail. I, there were so many co- I, there were there were boxes of that. Pro- they couldn't give that stupid program wow. away. There were boxes of these things. Wow. Everybody, I had every all the dealers that had tables there got tons of these these, you know, for free these these programs because the because they couldn't do anything with them. Nobody, you know, the few people that went to the, this was in a the con was the convention was in a big room in a mall that uh, it was in a store that had closed in the mall. The mall rented out the store to us because it was just an empty space, and. Um, and Kevin Eastman at the time was dating a B actress named Julie Strain. You should look her up. Oh, oh, heavy metal. I know who she is. Heavy she's metal. like six foot tall. Yeah. And this was back in the, I mean, in the, er, this was back you in the mid her? or early 80s. She was, oh, yeah, they were together. He brought her to the con. And Hilarious. Kevin Eastman is kind of like, a, I think he's about 5'8", and Julie Strain's six foot tall. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> But you know, I mean, every, what, what was shows? the movie she put out? She had one movie. <laughs> she was in a, bunch of B, in a bunch yes, of B horror nice. and sci-fi <laughs> movies and stuff. But it's funny to think back on those days, and you know, and and I don't have any of those those programs. I don't know what the hell I did with the ones that I had. But oh, but now I see them online. <laughs> it was crazy them. money, right? Thousands of dollars. Thousands yeah. of dollars. Well, so Kevin and Eastman signed them all. I mean, uh, Eastman and Laird signed them all. Um, so that was back when Laird did sign. Now he doesn't sign at all. Yeah, now he doesn't even travel. Eastman's the only one that whore, like kind of signs everything. Yeah, so there's a whole story behind that. You should. Uh, I think there's probably. Uh, oh, you know, check out uh, this guy named Comic Tropes. Um, it's a YouTube channel, and he he knows a bunch of comic book history, and he tells the story of how. Uh, you know, Peter Laird invested his money well. When they sold to Nickelodeon, they were they sold for millions. Yeah, one there. guy wanted to sell out, and the other one didn't. Well, Peter Laird invested his money, and Kevin Eastman. Well, they both invested the money, but Eastman started his own independent comic book company. And Peter Laird, I guess, probably put it in the stock market and retired. <laughs> and uh, and so, um, you know, I think it was like they each got fourteen million or something like that out of it. And uh, yeah, but doesn't uh, Eastman or one of them still have the rights to all of it? The rights they kind of one bought the other one out or something. Or? Uh, I, so. I, I don't. I don't know how much. I don't know where where they're at with that. I. I mean, I think Nickelodeon owns most of it, but I. I I'm right. I'm just. I'm just speculating. You'd have to go back and sure. go check out that guy's channel. He goes through the whole history of it. Nice. Well, Netflix they did a. Uh, the toys that made us or the shows that made us they did a whole episode on uh, ninja turtles yeah oh so walton says julie strain died last year <gasps> oh, you hate really wow what i mean she was 
dying from know. dementia at 58. Wow, oh, wow, that is messed up. Yeah. So play hard. On that note, Carl Carl in the chat, he asks, uh, has anyone seen a Marvel movie and then read the comics and felt different about the movie? And he goes on to talk about Blade. He didn't know that <laughs> Ark, do tell. he wasn't a vampire in the OG run. <laughs> so I've got a little bit of experience with this. So, um, and I'll, I'll also extend this uh, as everyone answers to, have you ever bought a statue and then read a comic or watched a movie? And did it change your opinion of that statue? So as far as movies, yeah, watching uh, the X-Men movie um, where Logan goes back in time. Logan doesn't go back in time in the comics. So, you know, it's little things like that that always would be like, what the hell? Why did they have to change it? Um, but ultimately, I would rather see Wolverine go back than Kitty Pride because I don't like Kitty Pride. Um, <laughs> but as far as uh, like statues and stuff, um, especially now that I'm reading the Stanley, the Amazing Spider-Man, um, you know, I just got through where Vulture came back for the second time and it was really good. And I'm sitting there thinking, I've got to, I've always wanted to add the X in Vulture, but now I'm like, that may need to be my next statue. <laughs> you know, I need to figure out how I'm going to get it, but, or you pay should, for man. it. But, uh, that's a good so statue. That's, that's, yeah. yeah, that's what, uh, so whenever I read the comic, it, it definitely changes. And it, like I said, even the Ragnarok movie, um, pretty much being <laughs> identical to Hulk story. So, but I, I didn't know that Blade in the comics didn't, he wasn't a vampire. So that's that's news to me. I only have two statues of characters that I haven't read in the comic books before buying the statue. And that's X-23 and Domino. And you don't watch movies, so you've never watched a movie and felt differently. Well, I've seen so. X, I saw the Logan <laughs> movie, so I know who X-23 is from the Logan movie. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, those... Those are the only two, I think. Oh, Aspen! I have an Aspen statue. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get Edwin all fired up because he's hot for this <laughs> this Aspen statue. Um, I I never read the Michael Turner comics. I I read some Witchblade uh, way back in the day, but I never read the Fathom Aspen. Yeah. What about you, Joe? I'm trying to see a pattern with Jerry. If it's a pretty um, lady, he'll buy it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> See, I haven't read too much in the Marvel, but um, going into Batman, I've said that that's why I don't like the 80s Batman movies is because I didn't like how they changed things about, like, he doesn't sleep upside down on a bar like a bat. <laughs> like, that that immediately turned me off of the movie. I saw that and I was like, well, gosh, this isn't accurate at all for a fictional person. Batman doesn't sleep upside down on a bar. <laughs> So I, I'm more critical of the Batman movies than anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about you, Danny, when you're not watching uh, Cinemax? Skinemax, man. Skinemax. Uh, I don't know. Like Most of the, 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 the comic statue stuff, I tend to buy characters I like and teams I like. <laughs> X-Men's my favorite team. So, But I'd say Star Wars. Like I bought Revan. I, don't, I really don't know much about him, but he just looks really cool. And like same with Asajj Ventress, like I got to know more of her from the Clone Wars, and yeah, it's basically Star Wars. I'll I'll pick those really cool niche characters that you only see for maybe five seconds on screen or whatever. But comic stuff, usually comic book stuff, I tend yeah. to stick with characters I love yeah. and grew up reading. What's ATV talking about? Can't love someone who can't control themselves. Slapping my head. I don't know. Is that slapping my head or is that so much hate? I thought it meant <laughs> slapping my head. <laughs> like slapping my face. Uh, we need some clarification. <laughs> ATV, what's your acronym? You're not supposed to use acronyms before you define them. You ever take a tech writing course? I know you have. Shaking my head. Right? Yeah, shaking my head. Shaking my head, yeah. It's the same as slapping, I would say. Oh, well, you should slap it instead. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did, what, what did Art call it? S, what was your S so much hate. 
<laughs> so much hate. That's, I've never heard that one. That one confused me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I guess, just the way that my wife talks to me. <laughs> so, just so much hate. Dude, you got to get on that separate accounts, man. <laughs> Uh, ATV so ATV confirmed shaking my head. Oh, I'm not with the yes. the times. I make my own up when I don't understand. Yeah, same here. That's why you're. That's why you need to be careful with the with abbreviations. Whatever makes sense <laughs> in his world. <laughs> yeah, like even Je- Jesse, that could have been what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Slopping my <laughs> Uh, but uh but brandon what about uh you have you watched uh something and read the comic and got a completely different view of it watched something read the comic and then had a different view no not really okay no comment every once in a while the dc animated movies veer left and it pisses me off for no reason that i like 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 hush pissed me off uh off the top of my head can't there's been a couple that I'm like, why? Why did you have to do that? Yeah. Especially so, when it's their own entity making it. Like DC's like making the DC animated movies. Like you you're copying the comic anyways. Like that's why you're making the movie. Stick the, to it. The most cringe one was the killing joke. Like that one just took a yeah. way left turn. Yeah. They didn't match it in the animated series. Yeah, they made it like a Batman slept with Batman. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is that like they right? were a couple. The uh, animated version. That wasn't in my I... trivia. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so going back to what uh, Brandon was talking about, has anybody seen uh, the Peacemaker show? Not yet, but I'm excited to see it start it. Yeah. I read the Carlton comic back in the day. What is that? That's a, that's the thing. A lot of people didn't know that. That's a that's, that's a golden age character. Well, silver or silver. Yeah. 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 I had one back way back when. Um, mm. But then uh, Carlton went out of business, and then they sold to so DC bought DC, bought yeah. them like they bought everything and uh, or acquired the rights. So they might not have even paid much for it. And uh, yeah, that's that's where that character comes from. Damn. Is it any good? Uh, so it's going to be eight series or eight episodes in the first season, and they released the first three, um, which I thought was very, <laughs> I thought was very smart because one, it's it's Peacemaker, but it's it's also it's John Cena, and John Cena can only play a douche like that's. <laughs> that's his perfect you know type of role um but i remember watching the intro um of the first episode and be like okay this is gonna pretty much sum up the whole show type thing <laughs> uh it's because it's, it's silly and i'm like oh my goodness so i need to just go ahead and turn this off and my wife's like i love this and like that all three episodes we binge watched and she wouldn't let me skip through the intro wow so. is that silly for you? <laughs> what was that Maybe she's got a thing for John Cena. That's what it sounds like to me. (laughs) Well, this, you're going to see a lot of John Cena that maybe you wanted to, or maybe you didn't want to see that much. Um, But it, like I said, I think if it was just the first episode and they released it every week, I think people would probably get turned off by the first episode. But by the third episode, I was invested in it because we binge watched it. And now I got to, got to wait. I think the next episode comes out uh, Thursday. Um, so I, you know, like I was telling Danny, it's kind of like a dumpster fire, but you can't look away. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'll be sure invested to pass in that. it and, yeah, yeah and I, uh, into it. I want to, <laughs> I mean, I like them in Suicide uh, Squad too, it. so I'm, I'm interested to see this show, but I'm probably going to wait until six episodes in so I can kind of binge more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you liked if you like this character in Suicide Squad too, um, then you'll you'll like this because it's okay. the same style. I mean, the the same uh, James Gunn he he directed and wrote uh, these episodes, so it's got that same feel, um, same style. They even kind of 
pick up parts uh, from Suicide Squad to explain how we have a show. And it's an HBO um, series? Yep. Yeah. HBO yeah, Max. DC stuff. Oh, that yeah. should be pretty good then. Usually HBO gets things right. Yeah. Well, I'll, they got I that, do that they have far, all, but... all the animated DCs on there too. I was excited when I saw that. Huh. Yep. So then let's go on to uh, another show that Jerry has not watched uh, Book of Fett. <laughs> this latest episode, people are losing their <laughs> mind for it. Um, without doing spoilers, I assume everybody watched it other than Jerry. I saw a spoiler. That, that right, Joe? Like did you watch it? Brandon, like Danny? I know Danny did. Yeah. I saw yeah, a spoiler, Jerry. so you can go ahead and talk about it. It was uh, it like <laughs> a, uh, a scooter gang that had their scooters painted like Power Ranger colors. Vespas. A little bit. Pretty much. All right. I, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll take the lead on this one. I thought, I'm, I guess I was on the contrary. I thought it was the best episode yet. Yeah, obviously, minus the scooter part. But just like overall meat of the episode, yeah. Is so, is Ming Na Wen still in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's still in it. And Joe, I agree. I think as far as the action and things that you wanted to see, um, I thought things that happened in this episode, I didn't think that was going to happen until the last episode. Uh, as far as them getting things, um, I was yeah. very excited about that, um, but. It's it was so cheesy the the biker gang, um, yeah. like if they would have done the bikes more of a like a Harley type yeah. style or just make them rusted bikes. I mean they said that they couldn't get work so they're having to steal water. So but then you look at their Fast and Furious bikes <laughs> and it's like what the hell? The um, they that just came did, out of the car wash. Are they still yeah. on Tatooine? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which yeah, doesn't which? Work. Yeah. Like why are they not dirty in the least? Yeah, it just doesn't <laughs> fit into the environment. Everybody else has a broke down car and bike to ride, except these, what five kids? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah, people like so that, that was really my only complaint they about look it. Like they belong in a more tech rich planet. Pretty much. Yeah, they're in Tron. <laughs> yeah. But like everybody complained in the second episode that it was too much flashback and stuff. Yeah. So I thing, agree with when, that. When they, I almost wanted more of the flashback on on the third episode. Which well, yeah, because you saw where it was going. You were waiting yeah. for him to go John Wick on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, who's, uh, I've, who's directing this? The third uh, one was Richard Rodriguez. Uh, Rodriguez, I think. Or Robert Rodriguez. Yep. Why did he go with Favreau? Uh, I mean, he's writing them all. Yeah, yeah he's, he's writing it all. It all. He's just oh. not directing them all. I have faith they'll tie it all together. I just I keep yeah. making the joke. This is like the one division of Star Wars where <laughs> we're gonna look back and be like, okay, that was all right, but no one's gonna rewatch it. That's what I'm. I wouldn't say that with one. I WandaVision. wouldn't say that about yeah. Wandavision. <laughs> yeah, I'll. Yeah, Wandavision was was terrible. So, <laughs> Brandon, did you okay. watch? Uh, did you watch uh, Book of Fett? Are you watching it? Uh, yeah, I watched it. I just uh, watched that third episode and. I'm not too happy with it, but uh, <clears throat> yeah. I just I don't like the pacing. I don't like the chemistry or the acting. There's a lot I don't like about it. It's tough. And then yeah. I've, I've seen the, the I guess, um, little snippet people are sending around where it's like you see the where he was a badass in Mandalorian. And then now you see him like this and you're like, what what happened? <laughs> he reverted that, back to what he was in the in uh, Empire Strikes Back and in Return of the Jedi. I, I guess. And I know what you mean there, what you're inferring, but just like in one of those episodes, he takes out like a whole squadron of stormtroopers in Mando. And then, yeah, now he gets like boxed in and can't get himself out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in <constantly. fights. laughs> What happened with, um, it was, his name's Bib Fortuna, right? The guy that was Jabba's lackey. Yeah. Is he in, is he in the series? Uh, Bubba killed him. him. Oh yeah. In the end of Mando, Mandalorian. I remember he, he showed up, but he yeah, killed. He's, uh, the, okay. he's the leader of the, yeah. the, the Jabba's syndicate. In the so how did that guy him. get rehabilitated? Because when he was Jabba's lackey, the guy was really a mindless idiot. He was, I think he was, was just, very easily was controlled by force. And, uh, yeah, he took over when the, the barge exploded and took everybody out. Bib took over. Yeah, but, to, but yeah. why would you think that that person would be able to do that? He didn't have that 
skill set. Yeah. Um, he took it for five years, I guess. He to... wasn't scary. No, he was very easily manipulated. Well, that's the thing. He in in episode three, he he gave sections of of the of the of the community to different factions to 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 help rule. Whereas before, it was just Java ruled everything. So he kind of subletted the 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 crime bosses, I guess. Yeah, wasn't that right, Joe? Yeah. Yes. He he basically yeah. sectioned up the city, and I think what they say there's three factions now. And where yeah. was all this in comic books, or where where did you? Where no. did they you they, explained well, they explained it. it in episode three. Yeah. Oh. Because oh, oh. they have to explain to Boba like how the city's controlled. Is this is it? Pay. But this story wasn't told somewhere else of what happened after Jabba died. Not not, kind of. not this particular one in the in the comics they tell how he got out of the Sarlacc pit, which they actually stayed pretty true to in the first episode of Book the of Sarlacc, Boba. The Sarlacc burped, right? Yeah. Had some indigestion. indigestion <laughs> not quite. Spit <laughs> him and Boba out. <laughs> not, not quite, but yeah. It, <laughs> so they, they did take that from the comic, which made the comic people very happy. Man. Late Night's asking, uh, do you think they want to move this into the future slowly? How do you mean? I, think I it's, guess is how I'd... <laughs> I I think they're doing better by keeping it with the original three. Like I would think, because you've got a ton of Star Wars fans that are, you know, the new ones are like, oh, I like the you know the new stuff, and I I don't care for the old stuff. But the true fans that I mean, there's some out there that they'll only watch the original three and don't care to watch any of the new stuff. So I would think this uh, this book of Fett kind of ties them up into it, you know, kind of pulls them in to maybe make them want to uh, watch other stuff. So yeah. I think they're doing better by keeping it where it's at, but I could see them trying to tie it into future stuff to, to get those diehard fans to kind of, okay, I'll give it a shot type thing. Are we talking, are we talking sequel trilogy when you say future stuff? I would think so. I don't think he'll live up to that. Cause yeah, I think cause you, they filled in it's the gap. Span with the uh between the prequels and the new one with all the animated stuff so they don't need more there but like this live action stuff uh getting i think they'll try and fill the gap a little bit but i don't think they'll get all the way there to where to where the because it's tw the, the one 20 with, uh daisy yeah. what's her face yeah that's 25 years difference between yeah. uh episode six and episode seven and this is supposedly five years after episode six so you got another 20 years to make up if they do that um, maybe he's got a child that range that <laughs> ranger show i don't know if they're still doing that ranger show or not because that was supposed to be gina or gina carano yeah that looked like it could have been like something like they were going towards that force awakens timeline and the squadron yeah. last i heard is or he said he wasn't going to recast that it was either going to be her or he's not doing it at all so but then also heard that they were just completely scrapping that and then they were going to come up with a new storyline yeah I think like so. whatever for Boba I mean there's such a like a myth about him because there's so you know he only had like two minutes of show screen time for both those movies empire and right return yeah so people will build up like all these things like he's so cool he's so cool and then like the that people guy? that read the comics had yeah. amazing stories from the comics but i think you're kind of like screwed where no matter what happens you're gonna disappoint people like no one's no one's gonna completely like well, what comes out i guess the the big drop off in the action form was the, like the huge drop because if you take just his Mando snippets, he lived up to it. Like he kicked ass in the yeah. in the Mando series. If they had copied and pasted that style of action into the Book of Boba, he'd still be living on lore. But everybody's yeah. watching Book of Boba and they're like, "What the hell is happening?" Yeah, Did yeah, you it's to definitely something or show something to explain like why is there a sudden change. Because you guys, he saw uh, you know, Mandalorian. Well, he eyes. did Mandalorian happen before Book of Boba, like yeah. Book of Boba's current timeline, and after so, the like, Sarlacc pit. So yeah. it, they can't say that like his he keeps going in the chamber to heal from the Sarlacc pit because he wasn't doing that for Mando. Like, yeah, well, he saw Luke and freaked out. One. I guess. 
Yeah. But I, I'm still, uh, like I said, that I, I'm with you, Joe. I think that there was a lot of fight scenes that kept it interesting. And, there but was? The, the biker gang is what I was just like, it's so out of place. Like, if they would have yeah, just the changed the bikes, I would have been fine. Yeah. The protection value just seems a lot lower. Well, not a yeah. lot lower, but lower. Agreed. Are we done talking about Star Wars yet? <laughs> I'll go all night on Star Wars. Like, <laughs> so, so we'll wrap it up with uh, with Star Wars there, and let's go to another topic so that Jerry can go to the bathroom or MCU. Or go. <laughs> let's let's go with uh, Eternals came out um, uh, on Disney Plus. Well, okay, back to Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I haven't got a chance to watch it yet. I'm I'm like maybe a third in into it. I haven't got a chance yet. If it's a I'm good, liking it so far. If it's a good movie, I think I can enjoy it because I don't know anything about the Eternals. That's yeah, how you've I said feel. that before. I don't know anything about it, and I'm I'm kind of liking it so far. I'm only a third in. So, so I guess to me, I'll watch it. To me, this does not feel like a MCU movie. That's what everybody's saying. You can't go into expecting Iron Man. Like it's not going to have that kind of action. No, no namesake <laughs> person. <laughs> All right. Walton says, "Don't bother watching Eternals." <laughs> but see, like I went into it, I guess, with low expectations, and I thought that it was going to be all centered around Angelina Jolie, and it is not. She is not the main actor or actress. It doesn't no, really focus on her. <laughs> she looks great in it. Um, yeah, her but to me, from what I've seen, to go in like I watched it and finished it, and I was like. That was a badass movie. I enjoyed it. Um, but again, mm. it, and like I said, the Shang Chi Ten Rings, you know, that kind of didn't really feel like an MCU movie. But this is like the other end of that. Is like that this on isn't. Disney yeah. What's that? Disney. Yeah, it's on it's Disney. On that one was really good. Yeah, but see, like this, there wasn't forced humor. I mean, it was everything was smooth. I thought the fight scenes were cool. It was. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I'll watch it again for sure. Hmm. So, well, but Jerry, we have such different tastes, though. You'll you'll probably that's hate true. it. That's true. I'll probably <laughs> hate it. It's too much uh, color. It'll reinforce my opinion of your bad <laughs> bad taste, I guess. <laughs> uh, well, there is the the one scene that I was surprised for it to be in an MCU movie when uh, there's two characters. Obviously, they're they're naked and and doing something. So I had to tell my kid, "Look away, look away." When it got to that scene, um, <laughs> did it work? I so. was kind of surprised they showed that too. Yeah, yeah. Like I didn't think it helped the story at all. Like for it to be a Disney movie, MCU movie, I think they could have left that out. So I don't have to and try and explain anything to my. Too. It was weird. To, yeah, to my kids. <laughs> you never heard that before, uh, Danny. No, but not not from like a Disney, you know, Disney taking over type. Just just Skinamax. <laughs> just just Julie Strain on Skinamax. <laughs> that lucky Kevin Eastman. Uh, so uh, I recommend the movie, anyways. But um, so let's talk about uh, since Jerry kind of keeps it hidden, he doesn't tell everybody what he buys. So Jerry, you got in two things that you need to unbox. I did. I got in uh, Sideshow Swamp Thing and Sideshow Black Canary. Let's do it. <laughs> no. Oh, I hate I hate unboxings on video, so I I don't want to. And besides that, I get badgered because it takes me forever to unbox a statue. <laughs> Black you Canary is fantastic. Box, and when you open it, you pull a statue out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Joe, I'll, I'll, uh, you, I'll have you got it. By I'll have them done tomorrow, and so I'll have some thoughts on them. Yeah, she's a good one. So, Joe, you you like it? Yeah, she's actually my favorite female statue that I have. Oh, what uh, do you think about the purple overspray? It's not it it it's not as bad as I expected. Because um, when I saw the Catwoman get announced with all her overspray on her legs, uh, of the red, I killed it. Um, but then getting this one in hand, it's not nearly as eye-catching or as poorly done as I expected. So it doesn't draw or deduct from the statue to me. Uh, I'm very happy yeah. with this statue. Yeah, I think, I think you yeah. will be too. 
I'm waiting for uh, some points to uh, to come available, and I think I'm going to pull the trigger on that piece. Yeah. I paid off um, uh, Scarlet Witch, but, I, but I'm in some kind of weird limbo because I was on a payment plan. And Sideshow, sometimes if you delay a payment along the way and you don't, and it doesn't like time right, uh, you get in this weird queue and sometimes you won't get the first batch that arrives. So I don't know where I'm at yet. I'll have to call Sideshow on. I imagine they're closed tomorrow, but uh, call them on Tuesday yeah. and find out did I miss because it's paid off, but but for whatever reason I didn't get it quite the time when everyone was saying they were getting shipping notices. I haven't heard anything yet. Yeah, I, I get mine uh, Wednesday. Okay, so yeah. but I don't know if I'm even going to keep it because I have XM and I I need to stop this nonsense of having multiple. <laughs> multiple uh, <laughs> characters. I like the XM one. The Black Canary. Uh, no, no, Scarlet no, Witch. Uh, Scarlet. So, yeah. So I might, I might uh, take advantage of the sideshow return, um, or I might even cancel it if I'm if I'm in the queue where I'm on on batch two. Yeah, and it's and it's you know still months off. So I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. I'm I'm, I'm excited for it, but I think yeah, if I was in your shoes where I had the XM, um, I would probably not get the sideshow one. But if I had the sideshow, I wouldn't buy the XM. I, I think either one of them is uh, would be awesome to have. So, but oh, I would I'm not, getting that custom vision that, that has been custom kind of plastered all over the internet, where where he's coming out of like a bearing, a giant bearing. The one that's dark green? Yeah, yeah. that's the one I've seen. Yeah, he's dark green. There's no yellow on him. Yeah, correct. So it's a modern version of Vision. Yeah. Um, that's I cool. just gotta make I just gotta get some schedules to align before I pick that guy up. Yeah. Danny, you still got pieces floating in the ocean? Yeah. Psylocke is still paddling slow boat. Um, <laughs> Re- I mean I paid Revan. DHL Express, but for some reason it's just not moving from Singapore. Like there's no, there's no trace of it. Even I don't even think it's been given to DHL yet. It's just a label for like two oh, wow. weeks. So I don't know what's up with that. Really? Yeah. Hmm. And then, um, but it's not just me. I heard others are having that issue too. So I saw At George I from like, MC. I watched. Actually, I was like, uh, I don't know anything about that character, but uh, where does he fall? in the whole star wars timeline he'd he's be like really way early, early. early yeah he's yeah. like before any of the prequels this is when there was like a million sis or i'm yeah. exaggerating but there was a lot of sis yeah like from uh, what i know of there was only correct two. yeah he he's he's like hundreds of years before episode one type deal that's a really cool like, statue it sounds it's... like the wild wild west of star wars back then i guess um this age. i've read the books for him they're good yeah it the the there was organization i wouldn't call it the wild wild west oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, walton is yeah, ripping me is. again <laughs> oh i got um a, a custom slave leia coming in wednesday hopefully. oh wow really so, yeah from Who's, oh, I guess that's New York secret. The one that rhymes with New York City. Uh, yes. <laughs> how's the how's the portrait on that? I think it's pretty good. From I'd say maybe eighty to ninety percent there. 80, yeah. Eighty five percent maybe. Yeah. From what I've seen, I gotta see it in hand more. I right. got that one coming too, uh, Danny. Oh, you do the laying one, right? Yeah, actually both. Oh wow, you got both. Nice. There's yeah. two customs. Uh, he, in, they did one standing. Oh, awesome. same Where group. She's holding on to like a like a force pipe or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah like what, on the barge. barge Wait, yeah, on the barge. Are you getting that one? Brandon's well? gonna display uh, no, no. his next uh, his uh, She Hulk on the beach. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting the lane <laughs> one. On <either> side. <laughs> Who is? Who has She Hulk? Brando. Oh, Brandon has She Hulk. That custom. Oh, okay. I'll just make fun of him because he uh, he does madness and displays his Marvel and DC together. 
Oh yeah. And Star yeah, Wars. throw Star Wars in there for the for a good measure. Oof. Are you getting the uh, standing one as well, Danny? No, I'm getting the laying. Yeah. I felt that one fit fit her character better, just for me. And I wanted something yeah. not what? vertically. I mean horizontal. I wanted something more vertical. I wanted to try a piece vertically or vertical type piece more. Right. I mean horizontal. Yeah. I was gonna say you got all that backed up. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> horizontal. <laughs> a horizontal piece. That's what I was looking more for. Because everything, yeah, everything I have is vertical. So, got you, got you. I'm still confused if Danny knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, me too. Just keep to doing see the your hand gestures. <laughs> all of Danny's know, pieces bro. are laying down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still thinking about the taxes, man. <laughs> still thinking about the taxes. <laughs> so, so Danny, uh, talking about how you got a piece that you're waiting to ship, uh, and then one still floating around. Have you changed your mind about shipping? Is it worth the money you saved? I don't know because, like, I paid even more for Revan. Because okay, I bought I bought Rogue, which was maybe two weeks before. And that was like DHL Express 200. And then when I did Re Revan, which was about a little bit over a week, less than two weeks after that, it bumped up to 260. And I can't imagine that piece being that much bigger or heavier. And then it's just, it's going to get to that point where I don't know if I can go Express anymore. I'd have to just go slow boat. Hmm. What, yeah. What's the difference? What was the difference? Uh, do you remember on the slow boat? If it was 260 for DHL, so for Rogue and Psylocke, they were the same price. It was 100, 100 for Slow Boat and okay. 200 for DHL Express. So Slow Boat, it's going to be, they, they said, anywhere from six weeks to six to eight weeks, I believe, or nine weeks. And then um, DHL, of course, three to five days. So those were 100, 200. And then when, when I got Revan, it became 130 for Slow and 260 for Express. Gotcha. Yeah, I almost always go for the slow yeah. option now. Um, no, even no matter what I save, it just just because the, it's it's just it's just too much, and uh, <laughs> and eventually you get into this queue where there's always something on the yeah. way. You'll get something that one month. It might be a surprise when something shows up, but but uh, well, I, mean, I ended up going. Express I, I'm not for, in that boat. <laughs> I ended up going express for revenue. Still hasn't shipped in two weeks, so it's like yeah. That's that's a that. problem. I I yeah. might actually, I might actually ping whoever that whoever did that whoever that's doing that yeah. and say what's going on here because you know George got his. Yeah. yeah, he did he did his review on it. So PJ PJ also got his. Did he? Yeah. But I do know there's a few people that also have not yeah. had any movement on their shipping order number also. So that I was kind of relieved that it's just not me. Right. So anyone else here getting that? So Revan? Jerry. If I were a Star Wars guy, I would get it. Get it, Joe. It's, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Listen, man, I just I finally just cracked on this. I, I'm not starting with that one. There's a couple other that I've made the dive on. Are you not getting it? No, I just broke my rule of no Star Wars statues this week. So, what'd you, what'd you get? Uh, well, when Danny ships me the Ventress, the Ventress is coming. The, and then, the uh, Joe mythos, yeah. yeah, and then uh, Psst, friends and family, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> don't don't Cash. worry, Danny. Cash in an envelope. <laughs> don't don't worry, Danny. I got you. Um, Megan, cover your ears. Fr friends and family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Brandon, uh, I had an entire basement of Star Wars um, of the action figure type on display. I think like thirteen Detoffs full, and I finally decided to sell those and jump in on the statues. So the Mythos Ventress was the first one on my list. Because uh, Danny had it at a good friends, friends and family price, and then uh, I think the Vader bust is going to be my next one. Oh, wow, well, which the new one or the old one? The new one because I have no interest in showing the Anakin face, so I might as well save some money. Man, 
So are you into the NYC pieces at all? I am not into customs anything yet. So not yet. Yeah, I mean, never say never. I'm still newer to statues, and the license stuff has done well in taking all my money as it is. So once I'm done with license stuff, then maybe I'll jump into the other it, stuff. He's, he's going to be getting into it. I mean, it took, what, half of a week for people to say, you don't have any Star Wars statues? You should get one to yeah, break the rule. It, it, took, it took a lot <laughs> longer than uh, a half a week, but <laughs> I, I just enjoy the statues more than that stuff, and I can't mix it. It just looked terrible, so yeah. But I'm excited for the Ventress. I'm excited for uh, the Vader bust. It's not in stock right now, so I'm waiting for it to hit in stock, and I'll order Wait. it once it is. And that'll be your first you bust, right? Um, Yes and no. I got my daughter the Spider-Man that's behind you. Uh, oh, nice. That's in her yep. room. Yeah. I found it at a local vintage toy store for, like, stupid cheap. So... Cool. Have you guys ever have you ever guys ever uh, PO'd something and then not follow through with a PO? Yeah. I have. I like toss POs out the window, like, oh no, I, you know you can't get your money back or whatever. Yeah. I've done it. Like a handful of times? Not a handful. I've done it um, two times. Twice, yeah. So that's just pretty much like your whatever your your deposit, yeah, a couple of dollars out the window, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, for whatever reason, I bought the I bought the thing. Um, by the time, <laughs> actually, neither of them have shipped yet. So, if I wanted to throw all the money down, I could probably convince the commissioners to honor the the deposit um but but um the commissioners in both cases uh made it very difficult to try to sell off the um the the piece and i thought that bringing it in i would end up losing money more than what the deposit was if i were to follow through ship it here and then try to sell it because of the pieces i didn't think that either one of them would be um worth the trouble to go all go all through that and then end up losing the money anyway now there are have been pieces that i followed through with that i will i have a piece right now that i followed through with because i had so much invested in it and um i will i will likely be able to sell it for what it cost me or or probably i could even make a profit on it right so that i followed through with but these two that i just let go i felt that it it was more trouble and um i would likely lose money but even if i didn't lose money the trouble wasn't worth the deposit got it yeah i had a couple where i just climbed the scale ladder too fast where when i first got in i ordered a ton of one tenths and i was chasing like all the lines like oh harry potter lord of the rings and uh, then I jumped up to like sixth and quarter real quick. And I had these statues that I had PO'd like for next summer to come out. And I'm like, I, I have no interest in those anymore. I'll just eat the <laughs> eat the deposit, unfortunately. But that's just my penance. Your like, deposit was with, was it with Sideshow? No. Oh, um, I was about to say, that I think they're still giving that back, aren't they? Yeah, you can, you can, you can give Sideshow a sob story and usually get your deposit back. Yeah, it, it wasn't through Sideshow. And again, I looked at it as my penance. I made the decisions type deal. I was That's my learning yeah. curve. No, at, he did. Yeah. Right, so. so now I know going forward type deal. It wasn't, yeah. it was just literally my interests and scale changed so quickly. Yeah. yeah. So, so as it stands, I'm, I have the PO for the Leia as well as the one Danny's talking about. And, uh, and so I got the notification for it. And I'm a little bit on the fence because of that lightning, right? So after checking out a few reviews, and it's hard as hell to find anyone who's reviewed that piece yet. No one has. It's just, I've seen like the odd image of it, and it's just too blurred to even kind of make out. 
I think the advantage that you have with that piece, with those pieces, is that it's probably going to be the only ones done, even if it's an 80 to 90% likeness, yeah. it's probably the only one that's going to be done with a reasonable likeness in the near future. So uh, you could probably get your money out of it if you follow through and then sell it after after it lands. Oh, you'll definitely yeah, make money. Disney's not greenlighting any licensed slave Leia statue of yeah, any no. kind. No. In fact, Star in fact, Lucas hasn't done it forever. Yeah, uh, Lucas put the kibosh on slave Leia years ago before he even sold to Disney. So that's never going to That's not going to see the light of day again, <laughs> unless well, unless it, the 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 world changes. Did Hot Toys do it? No, I think no. Sideshow and Gentle Giant were the only statue guys that made it. License statue. Yeah. So uh, I think you'd be okay if you follow through, but but it's also going to be a little bit of a hassle to have to sell it. Uh, Dude, trust me, Brandon. The hardcore Star Wars guys, they're gonna, they will buy it. You won't have any problems unloading that. I'm, I'm hope, I'm thinking. What's the ES on those? Yeah, it's I definitely under a hundred, right? I think it's like maybe eighty or something or yeah. ninety. I don't. Know. Yeah, you'll you'll get the new players in the game that weren't around to PO it, and you can you can you can you know you can certainly get your money back and then so. Um, yeah, I'm not sure with it. ATV says, "I have a question for Jerry." <laughs> uh, oh, would you ever consider reading Invincible? Invincible, what Iron Man? No, the no, the I've, I've read it before. <laughs> the. Uh... Was it Netflix that it came out on? Yeah, but the, one with the, the one with the guy that looks like Tom Selleck in a in the in the Stingray suit. Yeah, I, I would. I I yeah. I would. It's probably I have so much other stuff to read. Uh, ATV that that it would be it would it would be deep on my list. I mean, it would have to really grab me like in the first issue to to kind of because I have a I have a ton of stuff that I want to read and. Uh, but yeah, I, I wouldn't be opposed to reading it. It's just time. Yeah. Yeah. And Walton saying it's on Amazon prime, the invincible show, which I still got to finish that show. I'm, uh, just a couple episodes start. in. Yeah. I've heard it's really good. Mark, you got anything coming in? Oh, yeah. Uh, just, uh, Scarlet witch, uh, on Wednesday. And then, um, if I can, you know, find some more money somewhere <laughs> or, or another credit card to put uh, black canary on. Um, oh, did you PO was... the nightcrawler? I did not. And Is I that don't think want? that I'm going to. Are you waiting so on you the other like one? It? The other one, like a Is custom one. There... No, isn't there XM teased one? Yeah. XM oh one? yeah. Yeah. They teased one. Um, no, I'm just, I'm happy with what I got. So I'm in. Sarah, sorry, good. I'll say I'm in I no get, rush to to get one since I've got. Do you guys have a? Ideas <laughs> change question. <laughs> Art froze. I'm, I'm eagerly anticipating this <laughs> for Art to finish. One that looks good. Um, it's not. I'm not telling my response. <laughs> our, our kick those damn kids off of the internet. <laughs> do, you, do you guys have uh, a budget per year? No. I don't, but I should. Yes, I'm in the yeah. same boat as Danny. <laughs> yeah, I should as well. well I mean, we every, should. Everybody should. Everybody should, you know, get get yourself under control and uh, yeah. But it seems like everybody doesn't. Everybody kind of dives in head first, finds out the hard way that they should have planned a little bit better. It's so easy to PO these things when you know deposits are small, but then then when oh, the payments yeah, start that... coming in, um, it's easy to get yourself in 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 deep. For whatever reason, I mean, we're all we all suffer from the same affliction here. It's yeah. it's yeah. it's very addictive. Um, so. Uh, but I, I think once you learn the hard way, 
<laughs> once oh, once yeah. you you know th then you then you scale way back. There's a ton of things I would love to order right now. I would love to get the XM Archangel. I don't have that, and and that's probably about to dry up. You know, it's it's about to ship, so it's the yeah. XM doesn't take long to dry up afterwards. Um, I yeah, I didn't I didn't get that. I didn't PO the um, Sideshow Nightcrawler yet. I would like to have that. Uh, there's, I, there's, there's a bunch of things that I want to get the Zatanna. Joe, Joe's got that, I know, and and uh, I haven't, yep. I haven't bought that yet. That's a low ES. That thing's gonna disappear. That looks like a good statue to have. Three thirty-eight. From what I've seen, I've yeah. seen a couple of people selling their sideshows to put the uh, down payment on that one. I know. I, I still like the sideshow too but, a little bit more. But at least no. I have a little bit of control right now to you know in the past what i would have done was just just put it on a credit card um but um you know now i've kind of said all right well i gotta be you know i gotta be patient about all of this stuff and if i miss out on a few statues i'm gonna so i'll miss out on a few statues yeah, I mean, I don't have like a solid budget <laughs> number. It's not like I go into the year like, hey, you can spend $5,000 on statues. But I do know like what extra I have that I can use on hobbies <laughs> each month. So I'm like, okay, if I get the Vader bust, it's going to take me two months to pay for it. Don't get five busts in one month yeah. or I'm done for the year type deal. <laughs> or I can go Ar today. Arcs. I can Walt go Arcs around just more, more credit cards. <laughs> Walton says I need the Prime One Zatanna. I actually like the XM better. Um, me too, but the prime yeah. one is really good. Uh, the, the problem with that prime one is if you get the, if you get the prime one, you, you kind of need that stage <laughs> because yeah. you know, that kind of completes the whole, the whole thing. And then if you get that stage, it's really expensive and it takes up a ton of room. Let's well, see. I like the XM better, but I like the, I would have done fine with the prime one swamp thing. But if I went with prime one swamp thing, then I had to go prime one on Zatanna and, uh, Constantine, and then it's like a six thousand yeah, dollar swing there. Right. Yeah. It's a yeah, it's a sure. it's a hole. Because those um, are one third. Yeah, I love the Prime One Swamp thing. I got a stupid deal on it. I just kind of have to think that okay, I have that because I got the stupid deal on it, and I don't have to complete my JLA Dark with uh, <laughs> with Prime One. Um, yeah. It's too bad though. It would be nice to be able to just to just have, you know, just have it in one scale and say that's it, I'm done. At least with Swamp Thing, he could you can justify it by saying just he's he can be bigger than everybody else. He cuz he can grow. You know, I already have the <laughs> I PO'd the XM Swamp yeah, Thing on day one, so they'll do a Constantine. I know they, I'm I'm sure they will. Whether they do whether they do the whole line, I I don't know. I don't see them doing Dead Man. Not after the I, trouble Prime once had. I don't see them doing Doctor Fate and the Stranger and you know uh, yeah, Ed, Etrigan. They're not going to do that stuff. I don't think. Maybe Dead Etrigan. Man though was one third. I mean, who you know wants to go down that line with a one third setup? <laughs> like I think it would sell a lot easier if it was quarter scale. I hope you're right. And Jerry, you get the Doctor Fate nod in the Swamp Thing, don't you know? <laughs> that, that's your Doctor Fate right there. There's helmet. Yeah, that that doesn't cut it. Uh, ATB says is there a licensed Doctor Manhattan. There is a one sixth scale. Yeah, nothing big. Nothing in quarter scale. Somebody will, might. Do, well, I don't know. Watchmen is a tough one. <laughs> um, Isn't it though? <laughs> if you, if you, yeah. I, I don't think I think Watchmen's a would be a line that no one would ever complete. Mm. If a company goes down and you know because you do Manhattan first, then you do Rorschach, and then what do you do? Night Owl and uh, 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 Silk Spectre, and you, I don't know. I don't I don't I don't think they'll do it. I don't think somebody would do it, and, it, and I don't think it would sell well. I think no, you know. Well, they would they do the do movie version. Thing. Yeah, well, Manhattan would sell well, and Rorschach would sell well, and no one else would sell well. Yeah. Man. I have a feeling the first one-third piece that I get is going to scare the shit out of me and chase me back to one-fourth. Oh, well, 
Yeah, I don't know. Those one thirds are pretty damn impressive. Once you, yeah. What if you end up loving it and you change your well, whole collection to one third? I would love yeah. to be able to do all my DC in one third, but I think Prime One is going to hit the brakes and just keep doing stuff that they're going to stop doing the stuff, the deep parts of the catalog, uh, because stuff's not selling for them. Yeah, Dead Man's not. That's a low ES, and it still can't sell it. Even at twenty five percent off, it didn't sell out. Yeah, some sucker bought it. But Dead Man's a very <laughs> niche, char- niche character. He is, but that's what he's saying. They're not gonna. They're gonna get back out of the back catalog. They're gonna go back up to the front people. Yeah, like I mean, they, so Zatanna. I, it's a low e. It's, it shows low stock, but I think it was just really low ES. And, yeah. and whatever triggers their low stock, I don't know. It, it says it's low. Um, they have Black Canary, but they're not going to do a green. I don't think they're going to do a Green Arrow. I don't think they're going to do a Green Lantern. Uh, I would love to see those. I'd love to see a, a a comic book accurate Shazam Captain Marvel in yeah, like the style of nice. Prime One Hush Superman and the Black Adam too. Yeah, for sure. Wait a sec. Which which artist are we talking about? Captain Marvel. Which artist? Alex Ross, maybe. Yeah, like an Alex Ross one would be I nice. Think he drew the definitive of both. He does do a definitive. Yeah. Unless you're talking the close eyes, Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ATV saying Black Adam's coming down the road. I, I would imagine so, just because of the movie, but. Yeah, I don't think we'll get a comic version. It'll be The Rock. Yeah, I, I'm, unfortunately, um, you know, Prime One does that because they made the statue, they made the the movie version of the of Shazam, mm-hmm. and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. <laughs> I enjoyed yeah. the movie actually. That's that was a movie I watched. Oh, so you really you watched it? I did watch it. And I enjoyed it too. I was surprised. I was surprised as well um, that I liked it. Um, I think they could have done. A, I think they could have done a perfectly good movie had they stayed comic accurate. But the deviation, I was, I enjoyed the movie. Um, like, yeah, well, I wouldn't want. In spite of it work. being, in it spite of it movie. Be, not being comic accurate. Well, then they redid the comic and made it fall in line <laughs> with the the movie. Uh huh. So what, Mark, did you so want to finish with what you were saying about Nightcrawler? You don't have to read it, Jerry. Oh, did I cut him off? Sorry. Oh, he froze. Yeah. Yeah. What was the story oh, on Nightcrawler? Oh, he's moving. <laughs> he's he's got the comic <laughs> cat Nightcrawler. Who's got the? Comic yeah, I've got the comic. Arc does. I'm a cat. I picked up. Uh, I got these in though. I'm okay. just gonna keep freezing. Oh, nice. <laughs> Oh, oh the, the Jane Foster. Jane Foster. Yep. Yeah, cool. Would you buy those like on a on like a claim auction or something? I see. Uh, Venom. Uh, Auto Venom. Cool. Or oh, nine point eight in there. Very cool cover. Got a Spidey. Uh, I think it's 55. It's also a Del Auto Spider Man. I, I like Del Auto's take on Spider Man. Oh, I love his artwork, man. Like, I, I would love to have like an original Del, Del Auto painting. 30 grand later. Yeah. <laughs> grand finale. Oh, you got Oh, wow. Nice. What did that cost you? That's like over a thousand. Like a thousand I got a good deal on it. I got a pretty good deal on it. Did you? Oh, news, you got newsstand news too. Newsstand edition. News Love stand. to see it. Well, then it was all newsstand. Yeah, it was. Then, I think back then, at that at that time, higher. direct market was rarer than newsstand. Yeah. That's like seventy nine, I think. Seventy eight. But 79. people, but people say newsstands are harder to get nine point eight though. That's the thing. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, because they put them on those wire racks. Yeah. And everybody's thinking. Yeah, everyone them. twisted them up and put them in their back pocket. Right? Yeah. <laughs> what did that she hole cost you? Uh, a bit over a grand. That's 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 probably a deal. That's pretty decent. Nice. 
So is that definitely Stan Lee's last Marvel character that he created? Is did he create that? I don't I think he, he he was he was editor at that time. He wasn't writing comics. Well, he wrote the book. Did supposedly. he? Yeah, he was. He's labeled as writer. Well, that's well, that's, that's late seventies. That that was that was when he must have taken that on as a pet project or something because he wasn't writing other stuff at that time. Oh, I got some other. In fact, Jim artwork. Jim Shooter was editor in chief at that time. You guys want to see some original artwork? <laughs> Walton telling me to buy a new router. <laughs> Do you collect pages? Router and throttle the kids. Anybody collect <laughs> comic, pages? comic book pages? I I used to. I I can't find my original art. What do you got? I wish I, I got did. A, I got a Batman page. Nice. Nice. Who is it? Well, I was hoping you could tell me, man. Can we get full screen? <laughs> <laughs> Danny's about to be put on full screen. Is that from Hush? <laughs> no, there's no way. Some pencils, right? Yeah. It looks like a more modern Catwoman. It looks like Hush Catwoman. <laughs> I don't think it's Jim Lee, but I can't. No remember. idea. No. Is anybody? It... It's well, no, it wouldn't be that. I was gonna make a guess, but that doesn't make the, sense either. Initials. <laughs> Who is it? Capullo. That's what I was gonna I'll say, get, but it's. I'll, he, he, I'll get you another page from the same comic. Capullo well, see, only I, does I, digital. I don't know if I recognize the comic because they have read it from this page. I don't know. I say, yeah, Capullo only does digital. I think. Oh. Wow, those are fantastic pages. Who is it? <laughs> yeah, just spit it out. It's from your boy, Brandon. Oh, it's yours? You yeah, did that? Nice. Yeah. Oh, wow. Those are great. Yeah, those are nice. Nice. Are you submitting them to for publication? No, I just did these as like a test for back, back in the day. Wow. Wow. Got some talent. Here's a, here's a female Robocop. You want to see a female Robocop? I'm going to share some sketches with you guys. I'm going to get you a document <laughs> camera. She's got a tiny this, waist. This, this is just sketchbook <laughs> stuff. Cool. Those look nice. Wow. Right. Yeah, I like that. Here's, here's a little Hulk. Wow. That was great. Cool. Let's see what else I got. Venom. <laughs> I was laughing at Walton. Oh, that's cool. Do you ink? Do you do mostly pencils, or do you ink a lot of your stuff too? Well. I see you ink the uh, I mean, Hulk, but yeah, I get into the inking. It's just that uh, I kind of lays off, and then I just jump onto another sketch or something like that. But there's a there's another Venom with his tongue holding Spidey's mask. Oh, cool! On a Very rooftop. nice, nice. Chilling on a rooftop. So, do you have a reference when you uh, draw this stuff, or do you? No, I just draw it. Just draw wow. it from head. Wow, wow, wow. A bit of a Batman, I guess. He's holding uh, a bit of the Batman pencils there. I just get influenced by whatever comic book artist I think of at the time, whether it's like, you know, uh, Neil Adams or or whomever. I'll just, I'll just sketch off. But this is like book, book stuff. Uh, most of the work that I do now is on, on tablet, like digitally. But there's some inks that I started to do there with oh, brush cool. and ink and stuff. Was that a tough transition to go from using pencils on paper to it, it's tough it's tough when you don't have the the uh, at first 
at first you really have to finagle with the brushes and uh, in Photoshop to get you know to get the brushes to feel the way you want the the pressure sensitivity and uh, all that stuff to work properly. So, uh, but once you get the hang of it, it's it's a it's a joy. There's some here's a Superman. Oh, cool! That's Joe's that favorite. Great. Yeah, I uh, bring the <laughs> Batman's back. <laughs> But there's a, but this is just like pen and ink inks. Cool. Oh yeah. Type stuff. Those look great. This one was supposed to be sort of like a, uh, like, so, you know, daredevil Frank Miller style, Claus mm -hmm. Danson style. Oh, nice. Yeah trying to get it so that you can kind of see it just trying to get that kind of frank miller feel to it yeah all my sketches look like hello kitty i was gonna say i get stick people <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow that's nice yeah man i mean that's why i asked you about your favorite uh comic book artist here Derek. very nice very nice oh i'll finish with this one this is a again some bunch of pen stuff, but it's a oh wow, oh, that's that cool was really too. cool. A Wolverine Logan, very nice. Got it's a claws out. Very cool. Yeah, that's when I go to a convention. when I go to a convention, I spend the entire time in Artist Alley. And, <laughs> We, I don't got, know. we got one coming up on February 4th, like a little fan expo down here. Nice. Uh, so I'll probably go check it out. <laughs> ATV says, Dope ATV Logan, wants to let buy me buy your it. Logan. <laughs> What's that? ATV wants to buy your Logan. Oh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> you can uh, touch Walton base. Walton says, The Russians have found the channel. Uh, Everything is for sale, you know? Oh, here's a caricature of oh, the... Spock. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, that's cool. It's more like caricature style. <laughs> cool, cool. I, I don't know if you're serious, Walton. I don't see it. I don't see any posts that need this to be. This is like there. a ballpoint pen type thing. Uh, oh, yeah. See, oh, yeah, I do. That, I do see it. Yeah, it's like four up. The Vorong. All right, got rid of him, Walton. So, so are you more of a Star Wars or a Star Trek fan over uh, Star Wars? Uh, I grew or it doesn't up matter. with both. I grew up with both, and there's both. There, uh, I love them both. If I had to, if I had to make one, if I had to direct one, it would be Star Wars for sure. It's more exciting, a lot more exciting characters. Uh, yeah. Star Trek a lot is a lot slower for sure. Right. But, uh, but I, there's a lot of thing elements that I look. I do love about Star Trek. They got a lot more into culture and real, you know. Do you prefer the older stuff to the newer stuff? Absolutely. Yeah. There's another Logan. Oh, cool. Got some bullet holes in them. <laughs> this one was fully, almost fully inked, except for this part. Wow. Uh, but uh, yeah, got his uh, got a little belt buckle going on there. It's cool. That's 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 Get very a belt cool. buckle. That's very cool. That's like the one that the a, a, a custom commissioner just did one with with a. With the Indian head, uh, Indian yeah, chief, because yeah. he used to have that, right? Yeah. Very nice. Good. Very cool. All right, Joe, your turn. Let's see your your drawing. My stuff? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have like stick people over here. I'm gonna be holding them up. <laughs> It'll be stuff his daughter drew, and he'll be yeah, taking the credit for it. <laughs> exactly. I'll be like, "Isn't this so great?" No, man. <laughs> I got an old painting here that's giant size and it's kind of like a Batman. Wow. I don't know if you can see it. It's a Batman but joke. It's, uh, it's but like it's, Two Face and a Two Face? Uh, yeah, it's got like Two Face, but it's like an acrylic painting that's not finished yet. Oh, wow. But it's got like a Two Face in the corner there. Oh, very but, nice. A lot of highlights yeah. are not put in there, like to make to make things pop. You got uh, kind of a big titty, the cat woman wow. there in the back. 
A, a TV says Joe makes puppets. <laughs> right, my, my artistic ability, I can draw buildings. That's about it. Wow, that's cool. That's cool, Brando. There's no. Yeah, our artistry and cooking to me is heating up the pizza. So very nice, very nice. Well, all right. All, all right. <laughs> we're we're coming up on three hours. Should we call it uh, call it quits? I'm for it. I've got uh, some children to put down. <laughs> To, to bed. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, who's, who's, I'm not murdering them. Joe, Joe, yeah, you said you got to work tomorrow. Yep, I will be at work tomorrow. Uh, what about you, Ark? Yep, I go in early. No rest for the wicked. No, nope, no. Nope. Danny, you working tomorrow? No, I'm gonna do a day hike tomorrow. Got it off. Oh, nice. So. I get the day off too. What about you, Brando? You working tomorrow? I'm working tonight. <laughs> Okay. Well, he's in All Canada right. though, so I don't know if I'll they, just pretty much continue so right on my oh, desk okay. until a uh, couple for a couple hours at least and try and rest up, get some TV in. Right on. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, we're going to call it a wrap. Then I hope the the beginning of the show helped you out with all your tax questions, and I know you know it, it yeah. settled settled me down a good bit, and I I feel like <laughs> I just need to keep good track of of, of records. And have them all organized so that when tax time rolls around next year, I'll be ready to go. Yep. Yeah, I was really worried about that up here in Canada. No, you got <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that was a good point you made. But, uh, but still, very informative, very cool. Yep. Where did you guys find her? I mean, who? She's, she's, uh, she lives near me. Let's, oh, okay. Let's call it quits, and uh, we'll we'll jump into after hours for a short bit, and and then. Uh, All right, right. All right. See you, everyone. Good Later, night, folks.